Ah. Hey, bartender, come here. Yes, sir? I'm getting kind of hungry. Uh, what do you got to eat? Oh, well, we have beer nuts and we have deer nuts. Uh, well, what's the difference? Well, beer nuts are $1.25. Yeah? And deer nuts are always under a buck. What? what? Why are you I on a... Hello everybody, it's your old pal Zombo. It's time to visit the Rat Girl. <laughs> And we'll be right back to our very scary movie after these important messages from our sponsors. You can forget about Stephen King. Kane outsells them all. I need to know if he's alive or dead, and I need that book. It's a setup. It's a setup. I just have to work out how it's set up. Kane's writing has been known to have an effect on his readers. See this? It's a map. This whole thing has been staged. You just get out. This is not reality. It's all happening for real, Trent. Zombo, Dr. Zombo, can I use your dictaphone? No, you can't. Use your finger like everyone else. Dr. Zombo, Dr. Zombo, why should you always guard your rear while you're in the hospital? Oh, because you're in enema territory. And we'll be right back with our very scary movie right after these important messages from our sponsors. <laughs> Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Horror Mike Show on this fine and fiendish Friday night. I am your host, Horror Mike, of course. And uh, what you've just witnessed, if you can believe it or don't, were clips from the Zombo Show, which actually Zombo has sent me uh, via email. So I've got uh, brand new clips from Zombo. I will be showing those throughout the evening just at random you know because uh, they're pretty hilarious actually and uh, occasionally spicy okay 
Now, I'm currently enjoying not a White Castle liquefied burger, as you may have thought, but actually some uh, uh, Taster's Choice instant coffee. <laughs> Why? I'm not quite sure. Actually, it's because it expires in October. I just found out on the label. And the other instant coffee I, I have actually expired in 2021. So that's not really gonna gonna hack it. I'm not gonna be drinking that, but I am going to finish this fine taster's choice coffee, which is rather nice indeed. For instant, okay, for instant coffee, it's all right. It'll do the trick. But uh, so, other than the Zombo clips, what you've just seen, of course, you saw. In the Mouth of Madness, the trailer to the John Carpenter, one of John Carpenter's other masterpieces, as far as I'm concerned. One of the greatest Lovecraftian films ever made. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, well, I'll show you where you can see it now. Just bear with me here. But uh, that was 1995, John Carpenter, In the Mouth of Madness. Of course, Sam Neill in the starring role with that and also we looked at banshee chapter from 2013 which is another great lovecraftian horror film that is on tubi we're going to be taking a closer look at that a little later on in the program and you also saw a teaser trailer to at the mountains of madness now this is a company that makes motion comics of Lovecraft stories that have already been adapted to comic book form by an artist called Tanab Gao. And uh, so they take those graphic novels and they adapt them to motion comics. And uh, they're on a new series that you got to see. And we're going to be taking a look at that brand new Lovecraft series in just a moment. But before we do that, without further ado, let's say hello to the chat, shall we? And there's already a billion comments. Thank you. Good God. Let's see what we got. Eric Boyd is on the scene. Hello and welcome to the best Friday night show on YouTube. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Good God, man. Werewolf by Lunchtime is here. Hello, Werewolf. How are you doing? How is it in the future, Werewolf? Now, Werewolf is in Australia, so he's a good 12 hours ahead of us. And uh, so how's the stocks? Any tips on, on the stock market? Should I? I don't know. You know, I always say that. It's Werewolf in the future. Werewolf by lunchtime. Michael Taylor is here. Hello, Michael Taylor. Boy, Greg McAvoy is here. Toronto, indeed. Indeed, Toronto. Eric says, hello, Horror Mike. Good God, man. Great to see you. Good to see you too, Eric. The Mysterious Unknown Revealed is with us tonight, folks. Vigo. Vigo, folks, that's what he's saying. Gary Carlisle is here. Hello, Gary Carlisle. How are you doing? Good to see you. PBR Street Gang is on the scene. Hello, PBR Street Gang. Good God, man. Good to see you. Gary says, what's going on, people? Hello, Mike. Well, hello, Gary again. Michael Taylor says, wow, Zombo knows you, Mike. I wonder if he watches the show. Uh, well, he does. Actually, he can. Typically speaking, from what I understand, Zombo works during the evening. Now, he's doing studio shows. As I may have mentioned, they're doing at least a dozen new Zombo shows. Yes, you heard that right, folks. So they're working on them now, but he catches the live shows. Uh, at a later time, you know, when they're like, for instance, over the weekend or whatever, 
because uh, he's rarely free during the evening. But he does, he has watched a few of the live shows, you know. Mysterious Unknown Revealed says, instant coffee makes me think of camping. Yes, it, indeed it does. And it makes me think of that hilarious scene uh, in uh, The Prophecy. Do you guys ever see that film about the giant mutant man bear pig creature that attacks the campers? It is, that sequence alone is just hilarious. I need to get that sequence and put it on my permanent list here so you guys can see it over and over again because it is hilarious, man. Michael Taylor says, Ch Taster's Choice Coffee has been around forever. It has, and actually my Taster's Choice Coffee has been around forever. Unfortunately, uh, one box is dated uh, like, I don't know, April of 2021. So I'm not going to be using that. Okay. It's, it's past its prime. I had totally forgotten about it. Unfortunately, there is only a few of those, you know, how you, you get it in the little box and it has the sticks of coffee. There's only like four sticks left. So it wasn't a great loss, but still it was kind of shocking. Uh, PBR street gang says, just watched 30 Days of Night on Tubi. It's movies like this that make me glad not every month has 31 days, folks. And you couldn't be more correct, PBR Street Gang. Hell of a movie. You know, we talked about it, the, I think, last week uh, or the week before, one of the two. And it's just great. I never read the comic book. I don't know if any of you guys have ever read the comic book before. Uh, but uh, I love the movie. I've seen it several times. I just love the pacing, the plot of it. There's just no bullshit. It just starts and it just gets into it. It starts, it's like this horrifying roller coaster ride where shit just goes south and it continues to get worse and worse. Uh, and there's just no escaping it, you know, for 30 days in any case, 30 days of night. Mysterious Unknown Revealed says, the future is so bright, we got to wear shades. Indeed, that was old Corey Ham. Who was the dude that sang that? I think it was Corey Ham, if I'm not mistaken. Hello, Mysterious Unknown Revealed. Steve Harrison is here. Hello, Steve. Hello, all, and how is Werewolf's cat? Eric says, I need to find Zombo. Well, you got, folks, hold on one second. I am going to, now that you mentioned it, I am going to show more uh, trailers, or not trailers, they're clips of Zombo, but I'm dropping Zombo's website in the chat because he does have really great photos uh, and stuff from the show, including the Rat Girl, of course, that vivacious Rat Girl, and Miss Transylvania, by the way, which is really quite nice. Michael Taylor says, wow, he watches the show. He has. He's actually watched a few of the shows, the live shows, you know which is quite nice indeed. And he likes them too, you know, which is probably why he sent me the, the clips. You know, he knew that I had shown a few of his clips before because they're funny as hell. I just love, he's one of my, he's become one of my favorite horror hosts of all time. And he's still doing it. Obviously they're about to do 12 new shows. So Zombo folks, I just dropped the link in the chat. By all means, check him out. He is always on the Monster Channel. His shows run at Friday at midnight and Monday at 8 p.m. Okay, so you got two different time slots to catch Zombo's full shows where he, you know, he hosts a movie and he has all of these little skits with Rat Girl and Miss Transylvania. You know, it's pretty damned hilarious. 
Mysterious Unknown Revealed says, yes, the mutant bear, indeed. Oh, the mutant bear from the prophecy. Uh, Werewolf by Lunchtime says, hi, Steve. He is fine, but needs some dental work, so bye bye lots of money. Sob, thanks for asking. Oh, dental work. Ooh, kitty dental work. Wow. Um, Michael Taylor says, well, he watches this show. Very cool. Maybe he'll be in the chat one of these days. He might be. You never know. You never know, Michael Taylor. He might get over here during a live show. But I know you guys love those skits. I know it because you've, you know, reacted to them. And, you know, I just love showing them because they're little like 30 second clips and perfect for segueing into other parts of the show. Uh, Steve Harrison says, found three-year-old coffee here too and blame hoarding from lockdown. Indeed. Steve says, Corey Hart. That's the guy. I don't know. Is there a Corey Ham? I think there was. One of those guys, it was Corey Ham and Corey Feldman, right? Weren't those like two like, you know, peas in a pod back in the 80s doing shows together, movies? And Corey Hart was the singer, yeah, with the sunglasses at night. That is the link, folks, Zombo.com, if you want to check out his website and see what he's got. It's very amusing, to say the least. Michael Taylor says, I like 30 Days of Night. Clever vampire concept, indeed. Jacob is here. Hello, Jacob. How are you doing? Good to see you, sir. Eric says, just the clips I have seen, and, and I already dig Zombo and everyone. I wonder if Rat Girl is single. Ha ha, asking for a friend. Well, that friend being me. Yeah, now keep in mind, Eric, that those Rat Girl uh, clips that you see that I show you, those are from shows that are at least eight years old. You know, so I would imagine I this is you know, I don't know. I can't really say for sure. But when he does these new shows, which they're doing now, he may have new characters or he may have different actors playing like Rack Girl and Miss Transylvania and stuff, because it's been a little while, if you know what I mean. And I think that you do. So we'll see how that goes. You know, but she's on the website, Eric. If you want to see a lot more of Rat Girl, go to Zombo.com because there's some great photos. There might be some video of her too on there. Steve says Other Worlds on Roku has Sambo at four Sunday. He has a 130 page book for sale. Okay. Werewolf says, Rico, my cat is actually watching the show with me now. Steve says, Haim, Corey Haim, and Canadian as well. Okay. Sunglasses at night, good tune. Steve says, Rat Girl, I gave up on her. She's always tied up. Folks, there you go right there. Um, all right, guys. All right. So we've seen some trailers. We've seen some Zombo clips. Now, tonight we're going to be taking a look at Lovecraftian films and a few directly related to Lovecraft. How should I put this? Like quasi adaptations loosely based upon his work. Let's put it that way. And we are... Once again, this show is also a celebration of the 100th anniversary, anniversary of Weird Tales Pulp Magazine. I'm not sure if you guys realize that or not. We've, I've done a couple of shows already uh, during the year because this is it. Weird Tales first appeared in 1923, okay? 
and uh, it is a hundred years. And the thing about Weird Tales is this. If it wasn't for Weird Tales, horror as a genre would be completely different today. It would be completely different. And I, I'm saying different for the worse. Why? Because it launched so many great writers. It got people out there, obviously H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, Hugh B. Cave. Uh, God, you know, you could go down a major list. Edmund Hamilton, a ton of writers. And of course, later on, Ray Bradbury, Robert Block, they all wrote for Weird Tales, man. You know, uh, so we owe Weird Tales a tremendous debt of gratitude for getting these people, these writers' names on the map. You know, and that's that's why you're going to probably from now until December of at least of this year, you're going to see probably a couple more videos from me on Weird Tales, Pulp Magazine. Uh, it basically lasted. It went from 1923, I believe, to 1954, which is a pretty damn good run, folks. That's like, you know, what what is that? 31 years. You know, for a magazine, that's a pretty damn good run uh, for a pulp magazine. And I salute you, Weird Tales. Good Lord. So in any case, folks, what is the Lovecraftian lore that we're going to explore? Well, first off, let me direct you to a couple of things before we get to the movies themselves. I do want to make a couple of special announcements. I was kind of like dragging it because I thought uh, Captain Strange Life was going to pop in. He still may, he still may come in. I don't know. We talked earlier. It sounded like he might come on to the show. He may just show up in the chat, but uh, I want to announce. Well, yeah, I'm going to make the announcement. If he comes in, then we'll talk about it. But uh, in any case, mark your calendars, folks. Get ready for a spooktacular show on Captain Strange Life's channel. Okay, I'm going to drop that link in the in the chat. You guys are going to want to to subscribe to Captain Strange Life. Okay, that link is in the chat. There it is, right there. Because on Sunday night, October 22nd, the captain and I are going to be doing a classic spook show. Yes, you heard it here, folks. Spook show, October 22nd, Sunday night. Get ready with several special guests, okay? You're going to want to see this. Believe me. Trust me. This is going to be a hell of a show. Not only that, but there's going to be a bit of a costume contest. Now, you guys may recall last year I did a show on my channel, Halloween show. We had a costume contest. We had like four or five entrants, which was good. It was totally cool. You know, I... I was hoping for double that, triple that. It didn't happen. There were just four or five people in costume that came on the show. And it was it was fun. I think this one's going to be a lot bigger. We're having a costume contest. And there will be two prizes. We're going to have grand prize and runner up. So two ways to win. Let me show you, folks, what you might be winning. Okay. Now, this is pretty much finalized on my end. We've agreed that I would provide one of the prizes and ca the captain would provide the other. Okay. So, check this out. From 1996, Men of Mystery, issue number 28. This is all about Golden Age comics, folks. With that amazing good girl bondage art Schomburg cover of 
the Black Terror, Miss Mask, and the Fighting Yank. And this is a spectacular issue. It is in excellent shape. Number one. Okay. Number two. Recognize her. That's Mimi Rodan. You know who the artist is? You better. That's Dave Stevens. This is the back cover to Dark Horse issue number 100. And Dave Stevens dropped the back cover of that incredibly sexy Mimi Rodan and her owl on the back cover. It is also in very fine condition, folks. Okay. Number three. From 1986, Eclipse Comics, issue number seven of Mr. Monster. Now, this is the, it's kind of a special issue because this is when Mr. Monster was nominated for the Kirby Award for 1986. Okay. And it is also in very fine shape. Eclipse Comics, folks, Mr. Monster. Last but not least from me, check this out. Mr. Monster number two from 1985, the Dave Stevens cover. This is also in very fine to near mint condition. It is gorgeous. It's pretty much flawless, folks. And this is the one of the most sought out, probably the most sought after Mr. Monster comic book, because of course it's got this fabulous Dave Stevens cover, you know? So there you go, folks. That's those four comics are one of the prizes you could win for best costume. Here's what happens on October 22nd during the show. If you show up, you're in costume, you come on the show for a minute to show off your costume, you know, you don't have to stay on that long, just a minute or two. So everybody gets a really good look at your costume. Then later on in the show, after we've seen all of the costumes, we do the judging. So there's two prizes. That's one of them. Okay. And the other one is the uh, a prize that Captain Strange Life is putting together as we speak. There is one other thing I wanted to toss in as well. On top of these four comic books, Mr. Monster, Dave Stevens cover, issue number two, fantastic from Eclipse. Just gorgeous, folks. Mr. Monster, 1986, issue number seven. It's a great one. Of course, Dark Horse number 100 with the Infamous Mimi Rodin, Dave Stevens cover on the back. And Golden Age Men of Mystery, number 28, with that amazing Alex Schomburg cover. Plus, a copy of my film, signed and numbered, First Man on Mars. Right there, folks. Blu-ray, you can win all of these. That's five items, folks. That is one of the prizes. That could This could be the grand prize. I'm not sure. It depends on what Captain Strange Life comes up with. But those are the five items I have for you for winning. So uh, get your costumes on. Mark the date. On the calendar, October 22nd, Sunday night. It's probably going to be, once again, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Eastern time. So somewhere in that realm, you know. Uh, we haven't nailed the exact time yet, but the date is, is done. It is October 22nd. That's when we're doing it. Let me get back to the chat and see if uh, how many people have fainted. From the incredible stuff that uh, you've just seen that you could possibly win. Just start thinking about, you know, costumes. 
Halloween, man. Michael Taylor says, I think Bug Rogers' first appearance was in Weird Tales. Could have been. It's one of those, one of those adventure characters. Werewolf by lunchtime. Hey, Gary, yes, he is smart and has taste. Michael Taylor, Mike, how old is that white <laughs> castle mug? Uh well, <laughs> well, I no, it's all like I'd say I pat it for like three years, you know, something like that. A few years. I love it. I love White Castle. We don't got White Castle down here in Florida. Unfortunately. Once again, folks, this is going to be the spooktacular show on October 22nd. It's going to be on Captain Strange Life's channel. So there you go. There is uh, the good Captain's channel. Go over there and subscribe so you're not going to miss this. Mysterious Unknown says, sweet, yes, indeed. Jacob says, nice, that's going to be a great show. It is. Oh, it is. Michael Taylor says, oh, very cool, Mike. Looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Mysterious Unknown says, holy crow, you ain't just whistling Dixie. Going to be good. Eric says, very nice. Indeed, it's nice. Mr. Dave Stevens, yeah. I mean, you know, right? I don't think it's any secret by this time, folks. I love Dave Stevens. So, you know, I've got a ton of Dave Stevens stuff. Uh, what can be said? The guy is just stunning. And that documentary, Drawn to Perfection, it is on Tubi, guys. So if you haven't seen that documentary about Dave Stevens, it's on Tubi. Mysterious Unknown says, just watched the Mr. Monster episode. Excellent. I hope you enjoyed it. It's short. The next episode on Mr. Monster is going to be longer because it's getting into the Michael Gilbert era, the 1980s Mr. Monster, which is fantastic. I got like, got at least 15 of those comic books from, you know, the Mr. Monster comic books from Eclipse and Dark Horse. And a couple of the 3D episodes. That's the thing I loved about Gilbert. Is that he just tried all kinds of stuff. And some of the 3D stuff that he did. He did a lot of things where he would go back to. You know the pre-code. He loved pre-code horror and sci-fi comic books. I mean who doesn't folks. But uh, he would reproduce those. And then he got Ray Zone to do 3D versions of those pre-code comics. Holy Toledo. I remember, folks, next week is 3D week on the Horror Mike show. I got to tell you, right now, wait until you see. Trust me, this thing, 3D true crime, is just fantastic. All you need... is a set of cheap ass 3D glasses like these. They cost a buck, a dollar 50. You can get them on eBay. Uh, probably in your own town, somebody sells them. They're very cheap, they're just cardboard. They work great. And uh, so if you're interested in seeing some really great 3D stuff, next week is the all 3D show. What I mean by all 3D show is that uh, about really about 15 minutes of the show is going to be in 3D. The rest of the show is just going to be normal. So, you know, but 15 minutes of some movie scenes in 3D. And of course, I'm going to be showing you pages of 3D comics. But one of the things that in this comic book, which is just stunning is that uh, they he had Ray Zone do Murder, Morphine, and Me, which was a pre-code comic by Jack Cole. And this is one of the ones that ended up in the seduction of the innocent, the SOTI hearings, because it's so extreme. Uh, it's got the famous needle to the eye sequence 
in it and it's it's pretty extreme folks so fantastic highly recommended this true uh 3d true crime <laughs> really good some of the best 3d i've ever seen by the way it is so clean it jumps right off the page absolutely fantastic so what the hell were we just okay so we got the 3d show going that's next week grab a pair of 3d glasses you will not regret it i think you're gonna get a kick out of it uh of course think about the 3d movies that were made in the 50s man you know uh, we're gonna be showing a bit of those just like trailers or scenes from those So there's that. Yeah, and oh yeah, it's funny too. I forgot to mention the cover of this is by Michael T. Gilbert, Mr. Monster himself. He did the cover to this 3D true crime. I love his art. Michael Gilbert is really top notch. He's top notch in various ways. You know, his experimentation with Mr. Monster in the comic books for Eclipse and Dark Horse, absolutely fantastic. And the fact that he, you know, Mr. Monster was a pre-code pre or golden age character that began in 1946. If you saw my video, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's brand new. Check it out. Uh, he was the original Monster Hunter. He traveled the world seeking out the supernatural and creatures of lore uh, and battled them. That's basically what Mr. Monster did originally in the 1940s. And then Michael Gilbert uh, revived that character in the 1980s. And the rest is history. I mean, you got like, Jesus, there's got to be like 30 issues of Mr. Monster that Michael Gilbert put out, you know, during the 80s and 90s. So that's quite a quite a few issues folks he had a it was a successful run for gilbert um so 3d next week folks another thing i want to point out here because i just got it in the mail i was very excited now this is something that apex does not sell i am dropping the link in the chat folks to Apex Comics right here. There we go. Uh, okay. So I was watching one of his videos. He's an artist. Uh, he likes Golden Age style stuff, much like uh, Eric Boyd, who is here tonight with us. They both love the Golden Age stuff. I love their work, both of them. And uh, But I saw this cover, this thing that uh, Apex was working on. And it's a, basically, this is going to be an ash can. Okay. Let me show you. If I can. Okay. So what you're looking at, of course, is just the black and white of what will be a wraparound cover for his character. It's going to be a comic book called Fembat. And so this is the wraparound. This, let's see here. Yeah, this being the front, and then it'll wrap around to the back over here. But check that out, man. I mean, it's just got this golden age vibe to it that I totally love. I completely dig golden age comic books and so forth. And this just, it really does the trick, you know? And uh, so I asked him if I could just get a print of this. You know, before it goes to the the ash can version of the comic book. And uh, we made a deal. And he sent me this. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is pretty good. Along with the really groovy Fembat uh, bookmarker in color. Pretty damn cool. And kind of like a postcard, I would describe this as, of the creep. <laughs> I 
So there, there's this giant woman in a bikini. And there's the creep in the background. And he's like thinking he's in love with this woman because she's saying, she says, ah, let me read this correctly. Why are you men so tiny? Where's a big man I can have fun with? And she's holding like this little guy in her hand, right? Because she's rampaging through the city. And Mr. Creep is back there and he's in love. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm your big guy right here. You know? I mean, that is just absolutely hilarious. Uh, I love it. I love it. So, in any case, that is what I got. I had to show you. Go to uh, both, folks. Not only Apex. I'm going to drop this one more time in the chat. But also, ah, there it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the bloody hell? Now, what, what the hell? What? Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm, I got screwed up here. I have to go here. One second, folks. Just a slight technical difficulty. Hey, uh, Lord. There we go. All right. I'm also now dropping Eric Boyd's link to his YouTube channel. Go over and check out Eric's uh, website. He does do live draw streams and so forth. And he also has an affinity for Golden Age style comic book heroes and characters. Highly recommended. Go check him out. Link is in the chat now. So those are two guys you want to check out. And there's another guy you want to check out. I just saw his. I thought, I, yeah, there he is right there. It's Fabrizio Aiello. Folks, Fabrizio Aiello is on the scene. He's in here. And uh, let me, I, I'm, I've got a. I'm kind of jockeying between two. There we go. There it is. Go to ch go to channel. All right. Good Lord. There we go. There we go. I'm going to drop his link in the chat too. Did that go in? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, okay, Fabrizio has done uh, comic books for Alterna Comics, and uh, I, god damn it, uh, hold on one sec. I think it's here. Good Lord. Ah. I don't know. I had the comic book here. Sorry. Can't find it. It was right there at the... My feet, but... Ah. Okay. All right. Here we go, folks. Can't find the comic book, but Fabrizio does Horace Hoover, which is on Alterna Comics. So check out alternacomics.com and check out Horace Hoover. Uh, I've got uh, the first issue, and I really enjoyed it. It's really quite good. The art is very good. Excellent stuff. Alterna Comics puts out a bunch of great stuff, and Fabrizio is one of those artists. Really, really quite good. Okay. So, I'm going back. <laughs> I got... There we go. Okay. Whew! Man, that was a bit of bit of uh, wrangling. Let's put it that way. Michael Taylor. Very nice prices, Mike. 
Thank you, Michael Taylor. Dress up. You could win them. Mysterious Unknown says, ooh, yes. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're good, man. The solid prizes. Look, that Mr. Monster Dave Stevens cover, ask any comic collector. They probably have it or they're looking for it. It's just one of those things. If you're a Dave Stevens fan, that's just a given right there. It is just beautiful. Werewolf says, is a birthday suit a costume? Well, if it's somebody else's. That looks like Rat Girl. If not, no. Okay. Michael Taylor says, it's a pre-Halloween show. Indeed it is. And this is why. That weekend, October 22nd, better for a show because the following weekend, that's when everybody's going to be out doing their stuff, going to parties or clubs or trick-or-treating or whatever the hell. Because, of course, that is Halloween weekend. So we figure, yeah, let's do it the Sunday before that, you know, so people aren't out and about. So that's the reason for October 22nd on the Captain Strange Life channel. Steve says that coffee has made you insane. Great chips, Mike. I am. I'm completely insane. Yes. Thanks for asking. Uh, Mysterious Unknown says werewolf by lunchtime. That would win the most scary. <laughs> Steve says, back in the 90s, the, the White Castle had an amazing set of Universal Monsters figures. What? You said, that's White Castle? You mean this place? Please explain, Steve. I would love to hear about that. They, had a, they actually offered Universal Monsters figures? God, how cool is that, folks? Oh, my God. I'm going to have to look into it. Michael Taylor says, you're, you've referred to Stevens as a mutant. A mutant. Yeah, he was a mutant. Definitely. One of the great. He's like the Michelangelo of comic book artists. I don't know what to tell you. But uh, that guy came out of left field. He totally suffered for his art. He got screwed by everybody. You know, Marvel screwed him. Then they they just blew it. They blew, they just screwed the pooch because, you know, Rocketeer started off in Pacific Comics, and of course there was even issues in Eclipse Comics, Comico, and uh, it became a huge. It was a freaking big ass budget movie, you know, which did not do well at the box office. I I still to this day I'm like scratching my head on that. Unfortunately, it you know. Didn't do that well. People love it today. They fondly remember the film. I do too. I love the film, you know. But Dave Stevens was an absolute mutant artist. I just, it's hard to even believe that guy. Mysterious Unknown says, I can't wait for that episode. I clicked on because of Kolchak, but fell in love with Mr. Monster. That's fantastic, man. Yeah, Mr. Monster is great michael gilbert is fantastic two mr monster comic books i am giving away sunday october 22nd guys so dress up come on the show show your stuff off and uh, you could win all of those prizes there are five prizes there four comic books and of course the movie and of course Captain Strange Life is is putting together something as well as for another prize. So there's two prizes, grand prize runner up, which is, I think, a good way to go. Steve says, Mr. Monster rules. I have almost all of them have one of his 3D. Yeah, they're all they're great, man. I, I just love them. They're funny. They're weird. <laughs> uh, Michael Gilbert. I swear to God, man, he's, he's an excellent artist and Mr. Monster is always entertaining. I love the stuff, really dig it. 
it would make such a great animated series. I would love to see Mr. Monster animated. Shadowhawk talks. Good God, Matt. Hail Horror Mike in the chat. Well, good to see you, Shadowhawk. Lord. Michael Teller says, yeah, if you don't like Stevens, then you don't appreciate great comic book artists. Yeah, I, I just, you know, there's really no arguing it, uh, about it because technically Stevens is just fantastic. You can't pick him apart. There's nothing to pick apart. The guy is flawless. He's, you know, you may not like his style, but technically he's, as I say, he's a Michelangelo of comics. That's really all there is to it. And he died way too early he was only like what 54 years old when he died of cancer this weird type of cancer that's strange man strange world strange world folks mysterious unknown says i got my anaglyph stereoscopic 3d glasses ready there you go folks once again next week is the 3d show and uh, to enjoy the 3D, which will be about 15 minutes of the show, but it's going to be good stuff. You're going to need some of these anaglyph glasses, red and blue. Well, it's actually red and cyan, uh, technically, but uh, they're cheap. They cost like a dollar, dollar fifty, cardboard, and they work great. Uh, you can get them on eBay, or probably in your town. Somebody sells them, you know. But uh, you're going to need a pair of those to enjoy the 3D portion of the show next week. Horror Mike show. That is the 29th, I believe. Friday night. There's Apex Link, folks, right there. Steve says, Gilbert's art for Mr. Monster was unique. And the cartoony style was balanced with pretty scary monsters. As unique as the spirit. Yes. Totally. Totally. I agree. Steve. Eric says Fembat. Yes, it's Fembat. Mysterious Unknown says Fembat needs a 3D issue. Fantastic Apex art. Yeah. I, I just totally dig it. I, I love that stuff. Just Just love it. And Eric's stuff, too. When he does this draw streams, he draws the Golden Age characters. I love it. You know, uh, personally, I think Eric should do, like, a portfolio comic book of, like, the various characters he's drawn. Put, like, 15 or 20 of them together in a, like, comic book or portfolio form and sell that. I think it would be great. Uh, Eric says, uh, I also love Apex character. The Creep. The Creep is a pink perverted giant. Yes. I've seen those, the, the colored pages that Apex has done. Or I just told, I told Apex, I was like, that's my comic. A comic, that, that's the type of thing I really dig. It's underground. It has this total underground vibe, but at the same time, it has this kind of uh, golden age vibe once again. Not as much as Fembat. But uh, it still has that. But it has this underground comics type of thing going for it. And it's hysterical. Uh, yeah, I, I hope he really, he get, you know, comes out at least with a story. Like the intro story to the creep soon. That'd be fantastic. Once again, there's Apex Comics, folks. Here we go with Eric Boyd's channel right there. Got to go over there and subscribe. You're going to love it. Uh, Michael Taylor, very funny creep piece. I like it. Yeah, it's so, he's just funny as hell, man. The creep. I love it. Steve says, download it. There we go. Eric says, please join me tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, USA. I have a live stream planned. I am also giving away some goodies to subscribers, folks. Good Lord. So that's 11 a.m. It's going to be noon for me. All right, I got to mark that. If I don't mark shit down, I don't know about you guys, but I have to actually take a pen. I don't use a smartphone. I mean, I've got a smartphone. I don't use it for doing anything, though. 
It's just here for show. No, no, actually, I I use it for occasionally shooting some video stuff like that. I got it cheap. What can I say? You know, Eric show tomorrow at noon. It's noon my time. <sighs> okay. Excellent. Excellent, Eric. We'll see you tomorrow. That's going to be awesome. Fabrizio has his Cthulhu glove on. <laughs> Shadowhawk says, hell yeah, Alterna puts out great work. They do. Shadowhawk says, I'll be there. Yes, all right. Well, you've got people head on over. Once again, here's the link. I'm going to highlight it right here. And it's in the chat. Go over to Eric Boyd's channel. Hang out tomorrow. Check out his stuff. You might even win something. Uh, you know, that, that could happen. Uh-oh, I just got a beep. You know who that is, folks. We are now being joined by the incredible. Oh, wait a second. I got to kill that link. Captain Strange Life, folks. Mm. Oh, hey. How you doing, Mike? How's everybody doing? How's it going? Oh, uh, man, I'm sorry. I'm late. I got on. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I've mean, been working all day again today, and then I got so tired. And I uh, overslept a little bit, you know, and the medication I'm taking, man, it just wears me out. Everything wears me out, man. Yeah, I mean, look, man, it's, you know, uh, what can be said? You're here. That's yeah. the thing. That's the thing, you know. And, mm -hmm. and as I was saying, anyways, at least, I, look, with my show, I just totally play it loose. It's kind of like if people are going to come on any time, you know, it's like yeah. drop, drop in when you can. People have got stuff going. I appreciate you being here. You know, that's what yeah. I'm trying to say right now. Uh, well, I appreciate you inviting me over here, and I'm glad to be here. Oh, you're very welcome, man. And and also, too, I have explained that uh, we are doing the Hollywood. Uh, the Hollywood. <laughs> the, the Hollywood. The, the Hollywood Halloween Spectacular. <laughs> no, no, no. Hollywood's got nothing to do with it, folks. Forget uh, it. Yeah, uh, we're 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 out of the Halloween, Halloween thing. spook show spectacular. Yes, on October twenty second, and right. uh, I sh I showed off the things that I'm, you know, I've got up for for what could be the grand prize. You know, as I was showing before, of course, my movie, but Men of Mystery right there with that fantastic Schomburg cover. Yeah, of Miss Mask all tied up. Great good girl bondage cover. And it's an excellent issue. I I love Men of Mystery, man. If people, if you want to know the history and specifics, details of the golden age of comics, get some issues of Men of Mystery. It is fantastic. It's kind of like what Tales Too Terrible to Tell is to pre-code horror and sci-fi comics. Men of yeah. Mystery is to Golden Age. What we got there? The Black Terror and the Fighting Yank? Yeah, it's Black Terror and the Fighting Yank and uh, Miss Mask. Moon Girl? Miss Mask. M Miss who? Miss, Miss Mask. Oh. Mask. Okay. Right. Yeah, Miss Mask <clears throat> on there. A great trio. They're in a ton of those comics together as well. You know. Um, but of course, also... This is the Eclipse Comics 1986, Mr. Monster. And this is the year that Mr. Monster was nominated for the Kirby Award. And, of course, he's got the, right there, Kirby Award nomination on Isn't the cover. A, a Gilbertson creation or something? Yeah, Michael Gilbert. Yeah. That's yeah, right. absolutely, Mr. Monster. Then, of course, well, the cream de la cream, of course, is uh, Mr. Monster number two. Eclipse Comics with that fabulous Dave Stevens cover. Look at that, yeah. So used, freaking good. You're used this to is, seeing Dave Stevens doing all the women all the time. It's hardly, he never, he, I, I never see him do the muscle men that much. So this right, is pretty cool. Not much. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And he, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Gilbert got him to do this cover for issue number two, and it's fantastic. It is very, it, it's <clears> flawless. <throat> I would describe it as very fine near mint. You know, it's in great shape. And of course, this is Dark Horse. I love this issue. Man, it's you got Dark a lot Horse of them there. Yeah, issue, look at that. issue number 100 of Dark Horse, you know, Dark Horse Presents, which was a great, really great magazine back in the day. But of course, it's got this ultra spicy Mimi Rodan cover on the back by Dave Stevens. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, yeah. Boy, that is just, I mean, come on, folks. Ooh la la. Is, yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, I, what I got? What <coughs> oh, have you been assembling some stuff? Well, stuff? I got a, I was gonna throw in here. Let me get let me get Frankenstein out of the way. Oh, there's Frankie. Yeah. Got to get him out of the way. He's up here. I'm going to put you on solo. He's there got go. the, He's got the uh he's guarding all my uh DVD giveaways, you know. Well, that Did you just get a new camera, Captain? Yeah, I got a new camera and it's kind of I, I got it. Looks great. Does it? Oh, freaking hell, yeah. It looks, I mean, I it's a lot used, sharper. I have to get used to this. I can't, uh, it's a weird angle, you know. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to set it up with my screen and the camera so I get, you know, so I can look more directly into the camera, but everything is not, it's just not working right yet. Okay. But anyway, I, mean, I got, the, I'm the gonna, image is fantastic. Oh, that's I good. I gotta say, yeah, that's it looks good. really good. I'm gonna throw these two in the Hammer Films collection. Ooh, folks, check that out. Now, this is another prize. This is what Captain Strange Life is giving out, the Hammer Films Collection. Yeah, that might be for, uh, you know, the runner-up. You were, you were suggesting uh, we have a runner-up? Yes, for the runner-up. Here we go, folks. Fantastic. Look at all those films that you get there. Die, Whoa. die, my darling. The Snorkel, which I never saw. Yeah. Wow, that's rare. What is that, The Revenge of Frankenstein? Revenge of Frankenstein, Maniac, Never Take Candy from a Stranger. That's another one. I haven't even I haven't seen that one. Whoa. That's like rare hammer films. Yeah, Creatures the World Forgot. So this Great. is gonna be cool. I have another copy for myself. So I, I didn't want to, when I saw those other titles on there, I thought to myself, I never even heard of those. But I had a I had to get it. And then sci-fi creature of classics. Oh, nice. Check that Five out. Five movies here. Ooh. Got, oh, Mothra, which I got the original movie poster of, you know, and the eight lobby cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then Fantastic. What's the, the Giant Claw. Oh, and uh, 20 Million Miles of Earth with the uh, Amir. Oh, nice. Yeah. The Amir? I, I call him Emer. Emer, Emer. the Emir. Yeah. Okay, the Emer. Yeah. And uh, Ray Harryhausen, the giant yeah. claw, yeah. Ray Harryhausen, man, you can't. Uh, that's just fantastic. That is great, great combos, yeah. Nice, absolutely nice. beautiful. So, you'll be looking forward to getting those, I'll bet. <laughs> and I think right now, I'm going to have myself. Oh, well, I'm going to have myself a nice cup of tea, you know. I, yeah, I just had that, I had a bit of a little bit of trauma earlier uh just before the show captain oh, i was gonna does that mean gonna, trauma movies or are you talking about trauma period try, try a little bit of tea trauma <laughs> uh yeah because i went to the box i got a box of tetley tea you know yeah and i go over there and it's like a box i still got like 20 tea bags in there and i go and i'm like hey i wonder what the date on this is and it's like April 2021. <laughs> so I'm like, no, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not remember, doing it. You remember the other day we were talking and I told you, I think I got sick from the tea. Yes. Because it was too old. Man. Yeah. Was, I mean, uh, he, and I, I remembered that and I was like, nope, not going <laughs> to go with that. Yeah, tea. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so especially the herbal teas you know i you think that they wouldn't go bad but you know sometimes if if oh, they're can. years you know uh old and yeah you gotta be a little bit uh, leery about it or you you never know like even some mold can get in there 
And if any bit of mold gets in there, yeah, that's it, true. it can get you. Yeah. And so, th so then I was like, hey, but I've got some instant coffee. Maybe I should try some of that. I look at the first box and it's like, yes, uh, August of 2021. I'm like, oh, Jesus, what the hell? Oh, and uh, fortunately, the next box was is still good. It's uh, it's good through October of 2023. Well, you can so save I those, had you some can put those old ones in a time capsule in your backyard. Mm -hmm. Indeed. That would pro that probably would. <laughs> Try to grow some type of weird Venus flytrap with it or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've known a couple of uh, ladies in my life when I was younger that had some Venus flytraps. Oh, those are great. Yeah, no, I used to I, have. I used to have. Making a joke. Make a joke. Venus. Well, well, I don't get it. No, I said I've known a couple of ladies in my life oh. that had <laughs> Venus flytraps. <laughs> But I don't call them Venus flytraps. I call I, them penis flytrap. Oh, the penis flytrap. <laughs> well, you know that 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 reminds <laughs> that reminds me uh, of this. Doctor Zombo, Doctor Zombo, can I use your dictaphone? No, you can't. Use your finger like everyone else. Dr. Zombo? Dr. Zombo! Why should you always guard your rear while you're in the hospital? Oh, because you're in enema territory. And we'll be right back with our very scary movie right after these important messages from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> the guy is just... Uh, oh, man. Uh, Zombo. We got to try to get them on, you know. I know. Well, I was just talking about Zombo, uh, you know, earlier. And the thing is, is that he's watched some of the shows. Like, you know, he'll watch the uh, after. He, basically, right now, they're doing new shows. So, mm -hmm. apparently, they're shooting these at night. He is, he, and he, he doesn't catch the show live. But then he wa watches it, like, during the weekend. Like, the yeah. you know, so... He's watched a couple of the show, a couple of the shows. He likes the show, and he's been sending me these clips. You know, because I'm like, "Look, man, your stuff is really funny, and I will show those clips on my show if you send me some stuff." Yeah, you know. And he was like, "Yeah." So he sent me this. I did ask him. Okay. Uh, you know uh, about what we were talking about. Haven't yeah. heard anything yet. We'll okay. see. We'll, we'll see, see what happens. Huh. But. Uh, Let's get back to the chat. We've got a ton of people. Oh my God, a ton of people have come in since the uh, since you've entered, actually, really? and have left comments. Yeah, they probably came here to leave uh, snide remarks. Now that I'm on. <laughs> well, here's something. Shadowhawk says I got to find those White Castle figures, and we were just talking because I think it was Steve. I'm not sure who the who mentioned this, but. Somebody mentioned that White Castle, years ago, put out Universal Monster figures. They did? Yeah, I know. That was my thing. I was like, what? I never heard of that. I never heard um, of them putting out anything. Yeah, but uh, apparently, oh, the Steve did. We're going to get to that. Uh, let's see. Mike, if you wanted to, you could still have your Halloween show. Well, this is going to be kind of, it's going to be our yeah. Halloween show right. on yeah, October 22nd. We're doing a big combo, Michael Taylor. This yeah. is going to be it. It's going to be great. Uh, Steve says, yes, White Castle toy giveaways. They were glow in the dark, I think. I'll dig you out some pics. Burger King and Jack in the Box, of course. Yeah, I remember those. I, I, yeah, just, I have a lot of Jack in the Box, Burger King, and McDonald's one, McDonald uh, figures. Uh, but yeah. the White Castle, I nothing. Yeah, I'd like to see these. Yeah, me too. I ne never heard of them. Apparently, in the nineties, they did this. Um, Gotham City Comics is here. Hey, Hello, Gotham, Gotham City. City. Hey, yes, Gotham City. Kevin, did you send me some stickers this time, or did you forget again? <laughs> I ordered something from him. You know, I was trying to get these stickers, the Gotham City logo. Oh, right. Yeah. And, right. You know, the last three times, I say, I'll send you some. And he keeps saying, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. This time for sure. Very cool. 
Mary, those, those would be really quite nice. Um, Mysterious Unknown says, oh, my God. Of course, he's talking about Dave Stevens was married to Brink Stevens. Indeed. Yeah. And he, he she was his model for a lot of stuff, you know, back mm. in the back in the day. Uh, to be a fly on the wall there, man, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shadowhawk says, we've lost a lot of greats in the last two years. Comics need the indies if they are going to survive. Yeah, that is true. Marvel and DC just don't care anymore. They don't. Uh, I don't even I don't even bother with them. Really. I, don't, I don't really collect the new stuff either. I'm collecting some some of the Batman stuff and Spider-Man and I think uh, Avengers. And that, that that's really about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everything is just going. It's get, getting too political and too. Uh, uh, they're trying to uh, the writers are trying to put in their uh, their viewpoints and the uh, social status of uh, our environment that we live in, you know, sure. and their, their polit politics and. Well, like, it's, it's also, you know, it's the whole thing, Di the Disney and Marvel union. Look, Disney is run by pedos. That's all there is to it. They're, they're, <laughs> they're really, they're a sinister group of people. They're really nasty. You yeah. know, I think Walt Disney would just, he's got to be rolling in his grave. Yeah. I they're destroying themselves, man. They, they are. They are. Uh, Michael Taylor says Stevens was beloved by his co-workers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's, you know, I mean, from all accounts, he was a really good guy. Um, Gotham says, I think Party City has 3D glasses, folks. Thank you, Gotham, for that. Next week, Captain, I'm doing, my show is a 3D show. Oh. I was just showing people the glasses. These are just the classic cheapo cardboard anaglyph yeah you know red and cyan you can pick them up for a buck buck 50 and i believe that gotham is right you can get them at uh party city you know a lot of towns have party cities right i got a and bunch of 3d glasses too yeah yeah and so next <clears throat> week that's what i'm doing i'm going to be showing some movie clips of course the classic 1950s 3d films and also choice comic books uh man i gotta show this again because you 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 are not here check this out i'm Cut gonna go plan. solo for a second okay this is 3d true crime oh yeah it? you know right. this one i got yeah. that one yeah it's fantastic this is so awesome 3d ray zone of course and they do as I was showing everybody, Ray Zone did the 3D treatment for that incredible Jack Cole story, Murder, Morphine, and Me, <laughs> which is the, you know, that was part of the hearings. Yeah, yeah. You know, the yeah. Soti, Soti hearings. Uh, and man, is it fantastic in 3D. He did a spectacular job. It just leaps off the page. Yeah, those original comics are priced way out of it's beyond the reach of almost anybody to buy them now. They oh they are yeah those pre code especially stuff like that the soti any yeah. of those seduction of the innocent that were in the hearings man they are pricey very pricey so it's great to see them reprinted you know oh yeah uh, like yeah. that and uh, I <laughs> I'm just I I'm one of those dudes that's just a sucker for 3D comics I love, I love 3D them. too I, you know. yeah man they're really you know some of them work a lot better than others you know in the 3D thing yeah uh, but when they work well they are just a joy I mean they're really fantastic they really work they're you know I mean you get the the full 3D effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the so, earlier ones were pretty uh shoddy, you know, because it was new, it was a new thing back in the 50s putting 3D in comics, but Yeah, some of those there are a couple though, like for instance, you know that 3D House of Terror, the one that uh, St. John's put out and it's got the uh Joe Kubert story. That Joe Kubert story in 3D is just fantastic i mean i've got the original and also mr monster reprinted that story so is oh, the reprint ahead. you think the reprint's better or the original on that one 
actually they both work. I tested work both of them. They both work well. That's great. Fortunately, the the original comic book I have from the fifties, the three D House of Terror, has not faded. So when you put those glasses on, man, that three D is just popping right out at you. It's it's really quite good. But I agree with some other ones. It's just uh, they try, you know, they they kind of tr- went for it and it didn't quite work as well. I it was the early 3D process, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Ray Zone greatly improved 3D. Yeah, there is no doubt that guy. Yeah, he made a he made a name for himself doing that. Yeah, he did, he did, yeah. and he deserves <clears throat> the credit. You know, uh, yep. God, it's absolutely amazing. That's another guy. When you think about people like, you know, in in the realm of things that we're interested in, like, in, for instance, in comic books. Well, Ray Zone, to me, is one of those biggies. He's one of those biggies behind the scenes. He wasn't an artist, but he was I don't know what you want to call a, a, a master technician at 3D, I guess, is what you could call the guy. And he loved the comic books himself. And it's just kind of amazing. No documentary has ever been made on Ray Zone. I mean, the influence of that guy is, you know, it's massive, really. Yeah, that'd um, be, it'd be interesting to have uh, uh, for somebody to either produce a book or a documentary on 3D. Uh, oh. Since it's uh, uh, invention, you know, and how it got into the magazines and. Yes, well, actually, Ray and so forth. Ray Zone's got three books on it. He actually Rita? wrote three. Yeah, three books on 3D, 3D in in comic books and other magazines. You know, like how would you say 3D on paper? And then he's got a book, uh, 3D movies, the technology of 3D movies through the years, going right up to uh, like stuff like Avatar. Oh, I mean, yeah. He, he brings the whole. You know, he he takes it from the fifties to now, you know, basically. And yeah, because the guy's like, you know, not only a a technician, but he's, he's a 3d historian, you know, uh, he, he, he definitely is, he knows his shit and he does, he's done some books, but I'm just kind of surprised nobody's done a documentary on, on him. him. Yeah. Yeah, You know, let's see here. Fem uh, Shadowhawk says Fembot coming soon. Bulletproof tatas, folks. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Yeah, indeed. Eric says thanks, horror Mike. You are welcome, Eric. Werrell says, do I need to? Uh, do I need bifocal 3D glasses? <laughs> do they have such a thing? Yeah. That would be hilarious if they did. I've I've never seen them, but I could I could see it though. So. Uh, PBR says, I have the artist edition of the Rocketeer. I love to look at it. Oh, God. That is just a beauty. That is a beauteous thing. Indeed. Those raw pages in black and white of Dave Stevens stuff. Uh, Michael Taylor, I missed one of Eric's live streams, but caught it later on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, you don't have to, you know, it's, it's good to be there live, but if not, you can always catch later, you know, catch them later. Uh, Steve said, Here, here's a link, gang, to some monster toy giveaways. What? A link to uh, some... Okay, I don't see the link, though. Uh, I, I don't think the link turned out, Steve. You may want to drop it in there. Uh, Eric says, 9 a.m. to 10... Okay, 9 a.m. PST, noon EST. For my live stream, prizes for subscribers only, Subscribe, subscribers only stream tomorrow, folks. Eric Boyd, fantastic. That should be a hell of a show. What, uh, my, Central? Oh, Was that Central Time? <clears throat> uh, Central Time is, uh, ten, is 11 a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, 11 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, Michael Taylor says, hello, Captain. Gary hey. says, hello, Gary. Hello, Captain. Um, Eric says, I am celebrating 300 subscribers. Also celebrating Mr. Muck Chapter 2 being finished. Thanks for the promotions, Horror Mike. You're very welcome, Eric. 
All right, folks, you're going to have to go over to the Eric Boyd channel and subscribe. You know, good Lord. Um, mysterious unknown reveal. Howdy, Cap. Is howdy, Cap. Uh, Werewolf by lunchtime. I think that I, that, oh, I think that will be midnight my time, Eric. Yep. Werewolf by lunchtime is in Australia, so he's 12 hours ahead. <clears throat> oh, that's a perfect time. Midnight. Yeah, I know. Midnight. Yeah, that is that is quite nice indeed. Um, let's see. Hello. Oh, yeah. Eric says hello. El Capitan. Um, <clears throat> Mysterious Unknown says, I love mysterious stuff. I would have never guessed it. <laughs> uh, Werewolf by lunchtime says, luckily, it's a public holiday next day. Oh, that's good. Um. Eric says, those men of mystery comics from AC are not cheap. Number one is a heck of a score. Yet, Eric, I tell you, man, um, if you keep your eyes out, they are. Typically speaking, I see those men of mystery anywhere between six to ten bucks a pop. That's what they sell for individually. I happen to get a really good deal on like 13 of them. <laughs> I bought a lot. It was one, like one guy was selling a lot of those, uh, of thir a lot of 13 and uh, I got a good deal and that's the way to go with those, you know, uh, to save uh, like, you know, we're talking half price, uh, at least I think it came out that they were like, I don't know, two fifty, two dollars and 50 cents, $2 and 80 cents each, uh, so that was quite good. Michael Taylor says, great front and back covers on that Dark Horse 100. Yeah, I, I love that. Nice collection. Werewolf says, is Frank's headless body roaming around somewhere, Cap? <laughs> right here. There it is. Oh, he's, he's looking for the head, for the body. He's wondering if the body is actually, you know. Well, well. I can't have around. him connected to the body because it'd be a disaster down here. It'd be like a bull oh, in a shop. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That is a great mask, by the way. Now, is that who did that one? I got this from the Spirit of Halloween. Um, that is nice. This is a universe. This is the universal adaptation of that. Uh, wow. Well done. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. I gotta put back up there. Mm. <laughs> oh, you know what? Thinking lessons. Yeah. Oh, what? What's that, man? Oh, I had to turn that on. Just the. Oh, uh, yeah. Those are great, man. Nice, the Venus nice. Flytrap is very fascinating. Remember those? They used to have them in comic book, the comic book ads with the Venus Flytrap. Yeah, and also the Venice Flytrap. The very the good, Venice. too. Yeah. You know, those are the Italian ones. They're like, hey, fly, am I going to eat you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and as Steve Harrison says, Zombo's last show had two great commercial parodies. One sunscreen, yes, and one a fake guy to guard you at camp. Funny stuff. He, he's, I love the Zombo shtick. It's just classic old stuff, man. Like old horror host stuff. I, I love it. Uh, Eric says, apparently, these are, oh, the White Castle figures. Ah, okay. I'm going to have to, now I got to go over to the, to the, uh, to that page i gotta go to the page now and and get the uh pull the link off here okay here we go i'm gonna put oh shit there they are there's one anyways wow well that that okay that unfortunately ended but i'm gonna put in it i'm gonna put it in the uh chat here i mean i'm going to put it on the screen do that share screen here we go 
God, I've never seen these before. There you go. Oh. <clears throat> and that is a glow in the dark. Wolfman. That is weird, bucks. man. Yeah, 25 bucks. Start uh, the bid. They didn't get any bids. On yeah, it. that's a little bit too, I guess. Maybe, I maybe it is a little much. I don't know. It's hard to really see how. I, I Oh, there we go. Whoa, check it out. What? Wow. White Castle glow in the dark pull apart monsters. Huh. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> what I guess the arms off? come off, maybe. The arms and legs pop off the suckers? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. There's one in every White Castle. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I never knew about wow. it. Never knew about it. So it, and I went that, to White so Castle. So they only had, yeah, well, we, yeah, that's, unfortunately, we don't got White Castle down here in the south. We, we've got Crystal, Crystal Burgers. It, it's the same thing, you know, the li little mini burgers, whatever, sliders. But uh, I've been to White Castle up north, you know, uh -huh. uh, on, on many an occasion while being up there. And, uh, but I never heard about these pull apart clone dark monsters. Oh, well, it looks it, like they got Frankenstein, Wolfman, and the <coughs> Mummy. And the Mummy. There were three of them. Yeah. There you go, right there. God, that talk about a rarity. I, it's just hard to, I mean, I can't really see the, what the hell is going on there with that thing? I mean, when they say pull apart, because I just don't see the, you know, like the seams or whatever the hell. Maybe they uh, stretch and they, you know, snap, you know, just fly. Yeah, maybe the they do. Maybe that was the idea. Like you could just pull them like, like you know, Mr. Stretch or right. whatever. But and there you go. Back to the natural shape or something. You know? Boy, that's just rare. That is totally rare. I got to say, man. I am sure somebody has covered this these in detail somewhere, but fascinating. Thanks for that, Steve and Eric. Uh, really cool stuff there. God, you know, you never, you just, you just never know with these things. Okay, I learn something all the time. And I used to go. I went to White Castle during that time period. Yeah, I never, never uh, heard of it, seen it, or heard of it. I'm, I'm real. Yeah, you know, I don't. Yeah, I don't recall. I don't think I got to a White Castle back then. It was probably later, uh, closer to like the year 2000, I think, before I even got it, you know, got to one. But uh, that's a that's really an amazing giveaway, actually. I mean, just from White Castle, you wouldn't think they would have like Universal Monsters. It's just a Odd I never even thought of White Castle as good, having any kind of giveaways at all. Yeah. Let alone the universal stuff. You know. Yes. Very interesting. Steve Very says, interesting indeed. Yes. Very interesting indeed. <laughs> Steve says, chatted with Brink back in the day. Chiller Theater, Jersey, mid-90s. Good old Brink. And, of course, she is in the documentary. Mysterious Unknown says, that's so cool, Steve Harrison. I've worked on a couple of movies. She was in very lovely lady feel stupid for not knowing this sooner um uh, eric says you can find white castle universal monster figures on ebay yeah i don't want to spam but you can find them there yeah that's great it's good to see that people still have them to sell um steve says mysterious unknown they're all split up when they hit the heights but remained oh yeah yeah it's about that and Michael Taylor, I have a party city a few blocks from me. All right. Yeah, go check it out for 3D glasses, Michael Taylor. Tubi is a modern day miracle, indeed. Um, yeah, they got a lot of those great movies that you can't find anywhere else. Yeah. Steve says, welcome. Uh, thank, thanks, Monster. Okay, I can't read that. I'm sorry. Thank Monster Mickle, who told us all a few <laughs> weeks ago. Okay, <laughs> I guess, man. Uh, okay. 
Let's see here. Eric says, here we go with his White Castle. Okay, just did that. Um, oh, yeah. Steve says, great mass, Cap. What about the Spanish fly trap? <laughs> I have to get one of those. <laughs> oh, man. Eric says that first link didn't work. Okay. Steve, I collected monster toys for decades. Not much got by me. Uh, Steve had friends from Japan, Europe, and all over the states collecting too. He also says they pull apart at the waist. Ah, I got it. The monsters. So you can mix and match. Whoa. Oh. Right. Okay. So you can put mummy on Frankie and stuff. You know, well, that's kind of weird. That is, that is weird. <laughs> Only from White Castle, <laughs> folks. You know, <laughs> you know, it's White Castle quality when you can take your monsters and mix and match. I wonder, it is. since they were doing it, I wonder if that's why they didn't have the Bride of Frankenstein because you know, <laughs> it would have been, yeah. The, she, she would have been the bride of Frankenstein from Tranny, Sylvania. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Build your own monster. That's basically kind of what, you know, almost what the hell they're going at with, with, the, with that. Strange. That is strange. Eric, yeah, there we go. Thank you, Eric. Here is a link to Captain Strange Life's channel. Folks, oh. if you haven't subscribed to the Captain's channel, you got to do it. Go yeah. on over there and subscribe. And don't forget, Halloween Spooktacular, October 22nd, Sunday night, probably around 6 or 7. We really haven't specifically talked about it, but somewhere in that realm. Yeah, maybe 6 Central or something. 6 Central, probably. Uh, so there you go with that. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Okay, so we got that. Now we're back to a little. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you. Uh, Captain, because you mentioned you might have a couple of books to show. Oh, uh, um, or uh, while you're looking, or I can show oh, something I got some else books to show. Did I, okay, did I ever show you this? Uh, I got like oh. a few copies of this, the, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Did I show this the last time that we were on? What is that? The Creature from the Black Lagoon, the DVD. Oh, the DVD. Wow. Signed by Julie Adams. Holy shit. Right there. there you go. Well, look at that, folks. Creature from the Black Lagoon, signed by Julie Adams. Uh, that yeah, is fantastic. Man. I, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't seen that. Uh, and it's from that. one of the, one of the theaters. With the, here, I got this in there. What was it? Uh, patio theater. Yeah, the patio's not doing anything either anymore. This was. Uh, Oh man, what year was this? No, it doesn't even say on here, but it was um I don't know, but there it is. Oh wow, it was so it was a screening and yeah. she was she was there. Right, she was there. She was in Whoa. the person and... that is fantastic. And of course, Creature from the Black Lagoon 3D. We will be covering that next week. Oh, really? As well. Yeah, of course, because it was a, uh, one of the great 3D films. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I personally enjoyed it in 2D, but, uh, you know, it was a 3D film. I remember uh, seeing that uh, uh, on Channel 32 here in Chicago. They were showing it, and you had to get 3D glasses yeah. to see it. And uh, I was looking forward to it. This was in the 80s, early uh, mid-80s, I think. And we're all sitting there, you know, me and my wife, the, the two kids, and we're got our glasses on, just like in the 1950s movie theater. And then it came on, and we couldn't even tell it was 3D. It was oh, shit. Wow. It was horrible. What Do you think it was a bad print? No, I don't think it was that. I think it was just trying to uh, get the, the, the 3D uh, uh technology over you know into, into your living room i did i i see what you're saying i it's see what you're saying work. right because on it depending on the tv you know technology yeah. has changed so much like of course that that was pre-hd there might be a, a a total advantage now with hd 
you know, uh, with high definition to see 3D better on yeah. your telly. Um, uh, hey, chat. You... Oh, I'm sorry. No, Chad, Am Chad Am is here. Hello, Chad. I was just, just saying hi howdy to Chad. He's joined us tonight. And Michael Taylor says, Captain, so this will be your second ever live stream. That yeah, is unless true. I, unless I do one before that, but, <coughs> uh, I don't know. It'll it will if I don't do one before that, it will be the second one. Yeah. Mysterious sa says, uh, Sven Gulli had it in three day three D. The glasses were jacked. What do you what does he mean by that? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure what that means. Uh, oh, you know, uh, Mike. You know, remember when we were talking about that? Uh, that we were talking on the phone. I told you about that uh, tomb of terror that I had with the guy that was just being brutalized on the cover. This yes. ghoul. It wasn't the tomb of terror, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I was looking for that book for like a uh, six months. It was a uh, black cat mystery, but I did find it. So I can show that tonight, you know. Black. You oh, great. Oh, man. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Let me know when. Oh, well, yeah, man. Uh, fire away. Oh, right now? Love it. Sure, sure. So is this, this is the Black Cat Mystery pre-code horror. Let me take it out of the bag. It's going to okay. be a lot better. Out of the mylar. Uh oh, what? I gotta see that. Whoa. Now that's a cover you don't see often. No, this you know, was from 1953. This is number uh, 42. They, they're they driving a, a, a stake through the guy's arm and his blood dripping from oh, the water. Oh, yeah. And then the, the, this guy with the shotgun, you can see him getting shot right in the face over here. Whoa. <laughs> I just and he's getting well, whipped, you know, with uh, well, it looks like a cat of two tails. Instead yeah, of yeah, tails. apparently. What the hell? And they're lighting them on fire. I think is that is that an Al Avison cover? Kind of looks like it. I I don't know. I know. Well, it was you know between Al 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 Avison and. Uh, uh, Lee Elias. Lee, I was just going to say Lee Elias. It could be. And it Lee could Elias. be Lee Elias. It's possible. They might have the information on the Grand Comics database, but I don't know. You know, this is interesting because this. Oh, look at the back of this ad. I mean, the a back cover ad here. There you go. 50 combat action toys. Whoa. Free six inch long die cut shooting cannon. Oh, that, that is freaking awesome. That's, that's longer than my shooting cannon. I don't need to shoot anymore. <laughs> my now, are those, are those, are those, those are the ones that were like flats, right? You would get them and they're all like cut out. Uh, they weren't three dimensional. The, these, I don't know. I've never. I've never seen these anywhere. Yeah. I don't I don't know if these are flats or not. Uh who's the company? Fighting Force on Broadway. Um yeah, I'm not sure. That's a great ad. But they were probably flats. I mean, what is the price on it? What, what are the one dollar? A dollar. A dollar. Yeah. One thing dollar. <laughs> but that you is know what? man, that is in great shape too, man. Look you at know, that comic uh, book. This, yeah, it's pretty nice. I guess. Yeah, I was Very lucky nice. to buy it when I did. I could, well, I wouldn't be able to afford this thing today if you can find it. Oh, there, yeah, but they're through the roof. Look at this. The original title of this, I think, this changed title one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. I wrote it on the back here. The f first, it was called the Black Cat Comics one through fifteen. Then they changed the name to Black Cat Western with number 16. Then they changed the name back to Black Cat Comics from 17 to 29. 
And then they changed the name to Black Cat Mystery Comics from 30 to 53. Then they changed the name to Black Cat Western Mystery with issue 54. And then with issue 55 and 56, they changed it to Black Cat Western Comics. Then issue 57, they call it Black Cat Mystery Comics again. And then 58 through 62, they called it Black Cat Mystic. Black Cat Mystic. Yeah, right. so they changed the title on this thing. I mean, it had eight eight times jesus well there yeah there was the classic changeover of course when the, it was that really hot uh chick the female character you know the black cat the black she was cat, like the yeah. hollywood crime fighter and mm. uh then they when they transitioned into the uh, horror stuff it became black cat mystery and she was on the first cover of that transition you remember that where she's like battling some weird looking monsters. Uh, and uh, then they just kind of like buried her in the comic and then she was right. gone, you know, totally out. Yeah. And she was on the Western too, though, for uh, a couple of Yeah, that's of right. That's right. Yeah. Black Cat Mystery Comics and then Black Cat Western Mystery, then Black Cat Western Comics, Black mm -hmm. Cat Mystery Comic. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, some of those are just awesome, though. Love to, you know, Harvey, they did so many great pre codes. Yeah, you wouldn't have expected it from Harvey, from the producers of Casper, a friendly ghost. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but when they went horror, man, they just went all the way. Yeah, it was they sure absolutely did. Absolutely awesome. That cover. Now, that I think is Avison. That's definitely not Elias. That's another guy. Uh, artist. One. That is such a weird freaking cover. I've always found that one to be just like, what the hell is going on? Well, they're trying you to. You know what I'm saying? They're sacrificing her to these uh, little guys that are in the pit. You know, he's got more friends in the pit, and they're sacrificing her into the pit. Yeah, and who's the guy with the freaking? He's like got this weird sheet cat head, dude. Yeah, I don't know. He thinks looks like he's... a wrestler. Uh, you know. Uh, and the El, other guy, El Gato, Blan El Gato Blanco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What a El Gato Blanco instead of El Gato Negro. Beautifully warped cover. There's no <laughs> doubt about that, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even Marvel changed the contents of tales to astonish and strange tales, putting su superheroes in them in the 60s instead of monsters when they when they transitioned back you see yeah, that's right. the whole thing it was captain america which was the one of the most hilarious transitions where they went from captain america to captain america weird tales yeah back, we, in, the, back yeah, in the 50s i think yeah it was like 1949 ish 1950 they tried they went you know and there were like two issues that were Captain America's weird tales, and he's right. like battling these monsters. <laughs> man, uh, you know, and then it that just went totally I, I should have kept some of mine. I sold every, I sold what I had, but uh, those are some great ones. Here's Black uh, Beware Terror Tales number one. Nice, nice one, man. I had that, I had that for a while. Now, to cut this covers by Bernard Bailey. It is. Indeed. Yeah, Bernard Bailey did some great Beware Terror Tales covers. He Bernard Bailey was all over the freaking place, man. He was doing covers for, you know, uh, Weird Mysteries. Uh, weird Chills was another one uh, with the uh, Bailey covers, you know. Really yeah, great this, stuff. Yeah, this is a, I like all these different monsters and these different ghouls he's got on the cover here. Nice. He would do those. Yeah. He loved doing those covers with like people being, you know, chased by like a ton of creatures that were like, you know, there's a really uh, horrifying looking. The lead story in here is by Bob Powell. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, what's it called? The uh, the Ghost of Trelawney. The Ghost of Trelawney. I yeah, guess was what it is. Yes. Take my nice chamber paper off here. 
Oh, look at that splash. Yeah. That. The ghost hounds. Oh, the ghost hounds of Trelawney. Whoa. Nice splash. Yeah, he, he was pretty good, man. Oh, he, Bob Powell's top notch. He was involved in the uh, Civil War cards back in the 50s with Wally Wood and Norman Saunders. And, of course, you know, the notorious Mars Attack cards. Of course. Yeah, God, Bob Powell was all over the place. He was absolutely good. fantastic, man. Oh, Bob Powell, and look at the you got you got something that you can sink your teeth into, so to speak, you know, or yes. your eyes rather, because you can, there's there's a lot of uh, text you can read a good story. Hey, look, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it really depended. I mean, even the Iger Shop stuff. There was great stuff in those Iger Shop comic books, like uh, Haunted Thrills. Yeah. Man, they did some killer stuff, and they had some awesome artists working for those. And I think uh, Bernard Bailey was one of the tops. I mean, he was, you know, he was one of those guys. Bob Powell was in there. Lee Elias. Of course, Warren Kremer, who taught Lee Elias everything he knew. Uh, that basically that was the deal with that. Warren Kremer was a master artist, uh, and of course he was editor for uh, Harvey for years. You know, like editor in chief. There, good old Warren Kremer. He was yes for Harvey Comics for 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 the horror when the uh, for, for the horror the, line. Yeah, I guess for the horror line, including uh, Tomb of Terror. Yeah, uh, Black Cat Mystery and uh, Chamber of Chills. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, he, as a matter of fact, for Black Cat Mystery, he did that famous uh, cover number 37 of the beautiful woman in white sleepwalking through a grave with ghouls that are oh. like surrounding her. It's just an amazing cover. You know, that's one of them. One of my favorites. That reminds me of uh, they did several covers like that. One that reminds me of an eerie cover, eerie comics cover with Wally Wood, where he's walking through like a graveyard and there's skulls where she's walking, and there's ghouls yeah. all over the place. Yeah, it's beautiful because it's one of those uh, pre-code horror covers that is fantastic artistically. It works, but it is not exploitative at all. There's nothing, you know sensational or shocking or weird about it it's just beautiful when you look at it you know hey uh, we got uh we got michael graff the uh memory crypt from memory Crypt. yes i just saw that All Hold right, on, let's mike, just how are check you? him out hey mike got off this live stream and shipped me the copy of first man on mars i just ordered from you thank you sir I think he means get off this live stream. Get get off this live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Thank Mike. you, How sir. You Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that, man. That is fantastic. Um, and if you ain't subscribed to uh, Memory Crypt of Castle Hills, we got to. Yes, I got to go back over there. Hold on. One yeah, we got to give gotta, him. Uh, yeah, you guys got to check out Mike's channel here. Mike's YouTube channel. Yep. I'm going to find it right now. I am subscribed. I, I try to catch every video he's done. There's some recent ones he's done that uh, I totally dig the hell out of. Yeah, I just watched uh, several of his uh, more recent ones myself. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Now I got it. Oh, go to channel. There we go. Folks, I'm just putting the link in the chat to... The Memory Crypt of Castle Hills. That is Mike's channel. Go check it out. Subscribe. You'll you're gonna dig it. He covers a wide range of topics, uh, you know, and absolutely amazing collection of comics. He gets new comics too. He also supports a lot of Indiegogo and Kickstarter projects. Yes, he's big on that. He's yes. almost like a humanitarian where that's concerned. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> uh, Jacob says, damn, that splash page was insane. Yeah, that Bob Powell splash page, man. God, you know, <laughs> it's just amazing stuff. Yeah, Steve there's... says, there's, what? There'll be no ghosting over the white tips of Trelawney. I think okay. he's doing the accent of a... Oh, right, 
Michael Taylor says, that was very creepy looking red skull on one of those Captain America weird comics. Yes, that was one of those transition uh, comics. Steve says, where monsters dwell was another old title that came out in the 70s. Yes. And the well, that's when the 70s picked up on the horror again. You can, if you look back at comics, and of course you're well aware of this, Captain, <clears throat> uh, probably more so than I, but uh, cyclical. All you got to do is look back to the like to the 1940s. It was the decade of the superheroes. They were battling the Nazis and the Japs. Oh yeah. Then when when the World War II ended, they were b- battled crime. Then when that petered out, everything started switching to horror and sci-fi and crime. And then you know, that, and westerns. westerns, right? And even romance. Yeah, you know? that's that. As a matter of fact, I think the romance uh, <laughs> genre for comic books was kind of invented by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, I think. Yes, you're Didn't absolutely they right. In 1949, they came out with the first romance comic. That was pretty much it, right? 49-ish? I think so. What was it there? called? Was it called romance? Maybe it was called romance comics. I think it was called Rawhide. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Western romance. <laughs> Cowgirl, now, baby. Cowgirl. Uh, but but then so then you had this weird short period from ni- basically from 1949 to 1954 of the Adam Age, that pre-code horror sci-fi, and then 1955 it all ends with the Comics Code Authority, and they, it goes into the Silver Age, and uh, then what happens is that of course early 1960s, what happens? The superheroes come back. Marvel leads the way with the, you know, all of the great superheroes and of course DC. And then 1970s rolls around. What happens? The My horror thing. comics come back. Yeah. yeah. So you you get this kind of a cyclical thing for many decades with the way that comic books worked, you know, right. and and now it's kind of like, well, anything goes, I guess, because with a lot of the indies I see. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of superheroes, but you're seeing a lot of horror. There's a lot of horror and sci-fi. Totally, you know. Um, let's see yeah. here. Uh, oh, what? who who came in? Oh, yeah, right. Crypt. Crypt. Hello, Crypt. Memory Crypt of Castle Hill. Memory Crypt. And Chalwa is here. Humor Comics also. Yes, Humor Comics were... Humor Comics have been... Were, Huge, were the first comics. That was uh, what was it called? Funnies. What was the first ten? Oh, funny comic? animals. No, it was called the funny. Pages. Oh, famous funnies. Famous funnies. Thank you. Nineteen thirty-four. The first ten cent comic, and it was back in that period. It was mostly humor. You know, in that short thirties period before they really got their shit together. Right, they were just doing a lot of comedy stuff, and they were just taking strips and reprinting them, you know, from the from the funny strips and so forth. Um, Chalwa, after World War II, Kirby invented the romance genre. Well, Simon and Kirby, yeah. Um, and Steve says UFO sightings influence sci-fi books and comics a lot. Yeah, no doubt. Atom bombs as well. Good old atom bombs in there. Uh, Eric says, hello, memory crypt of Castle Hills. Chalwa, what what the hell is he saying? It was in regard to the changes in the code, yeah. Eric says, then you had a mix of superheroes battling horror monster characters in the Bronze Age as well. And the funny thing about that, Captain, too, and I, you know, I don't know if you just saw my recent video. I did a thing on the origins of Mr. Monster, Michael yeah. Gilbert's character. Mm-hmm. It was a golden age character. It started in 1946. And Mr. Monster was this guy that dressed up in a suit and he went all over the world to battle the supernatural uh, forces and monsters. So ah. he, in essence, was the original X-Files and the original Kolchak, the Night Stalker hmm. in the 1940s. And then in the 1980s, Michael Gilbert resurrected that character. And, and the rest is history. You know, he yeah. had a very successful run with the Mr. Monster comic. Kind of like a golden age uh, Constantine. Yes, that's exactly it. You know, and 
I was like, what? I, I never realized that there was a golden age connection uh, and that that character existed way back then, you know? Um, yeah, Bob uh, Hope, Jerry Lewis comics, of course, in the 60s. Um, love Mr. Monster. Simon's grandson has had a oh yeah joe simon's grandson has a youtube channel or had one who remembers dick breber's frankenstein comic of course that was that the classic there mr monster premiered in Su ah he didn't that almost chawa uh, that was 1947 super duper comics number three the canadian uh published comic book that was his second appearance he actually appeared uh, in a 1946 comic. Uh, shit, I forget the name of it. But that's when he actually dons the, the suit and he officially becomes Mr. Monster. It was 1946. I want to say it was like thrilling comics. It was one of those where the character becomes Mr. Monster. Then he has his first full-blown adventure in Super Duper Comics number three in 1947. Horror Mike, the celery stock stalker. <laughs> okay, what? What the hey? Celery stock stalker. Uh, thanks for the info. He was uh, Doc Stern. Yeah, he was Dr. Doc Stern. Stern. That's who I saw the other day. That's my. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's your my doc? Time, That's my GP, Dr. Stern. Jesus. Could you ask him about his Mr. Monster costume? No, I didn't. Okay. I should have. <laughs> that, that is kind of strange, too, because there's one thing I thought about. It was like he was Dr. Stern, Mr. Monster. He began as that in 1946. And uh, Captain Stern was Bernie Wrightson's creation, right? In the 1970s. That was Captain Stern that's in the heavy metal movie. Am I not correct there? I, that one I don't know. Okay, I believe so. But what do you got there? What 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 do you? Oh, uh, uh, well, here's an interesting comic here. This is number four. It's kind of beat up a little bit, but I'm oh, so glad yes. I have it. Number four of Terror Tales. Nice. This is, what, uh, is it Bernard Bailey? Yep, that is a Bernard Bailey cover. cover. Yeah, I did write down yep. Bernard Bailey. Uh, Bernard Bailey cover from yep. 1952. But what's interesting here is this story here, the Black Candle of Life. Yeah. The reason is because it has a a very bizarre panel in here. I, I want to show you. <laughs> the hand placement by the woman is somewhat precarious. Somewhat very precarious. <laughs> Oh my God, that is cool. You gotta, you have to read. You have to read it, man. You gotta. Oh, I just can't. Oh, here we go. It's the, the guy says, "What is it, Mar Marjorie? Why are you holding your hand out like that? I, I don't understand it. It feels so, so hot." <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Oh, they they tossed in some zingers back in the day. <laughs> oh, they sure did. That is Let's see what that one. Man. 1952, man. It's... <laughs> oh, you know what? I I was looking for this. I uh, I seen this, you know, on on uh, Pinterest. You know, this. Uh, oh my God! You got a blow up of it. Yeah, I seen this on Pinterest, and and I'm looking at it because I was looking at other stuff, and I'm looking at it. And I said, "Damn, where did I see that? I know I saw that before that panel, and I could I couldn't for the life of me remember. But I I swore I that panel is from a comic that I have, but I just can't think of it. So I was asking people on my channel that were you know uh, uh, subscribed to me, and this guy came up you know about a few days later, Nick uh, Fus Fusar. I wanted to give him credit again. He's still subscribed. Oh, he's, the, he's the he's, he's the, the guy one that, that made me aware of it. That it was oh, in, wow. 
Man, that, that was, is that is one clean freaking copy right there. Yeah. The the close up of that panel that you got right there. Yeah. Look how freaking sharp that thing is. That's amazing. It's sharper than my kind than the panel in my Jeez booth. Louise, man. Nice scan. Oh, I don't that, understand that, it. It feels so, so hot. Hilarious. Oh, it's so hot. Oh my god. They got away with some stuff, man. They it sure did, man. Uh, Bernard Chalice says Bernard Bailey was famous for drawing Starman and actually had his own distribution company. That is true, Chalwa, but he's also like possibly mo most importantly of all famous for co-creating the Spectre in 1940 uh, for mo more fun comics. I mean, that's, uh, you know, Bernard Bailey's Spectre is just something else. It, it is truly fantastic. Very early Bailey. Crude, yet just great. I've got that DC Archives book of the Spectre from More Fun Comics, and that stuff is a riot. I mean, he was, he was, he was pretty vicious. Uh, the original Spectre didn't take any shit. Well, yeah, and that's, that I, think, I think Michael Fleischer tried to revive when he was doing the Spectre. Yes, he probably tried to uh, do a little, you know, revive him that way. You know. Yeah, he did, and I think you're right because you know the one thing I, you know, obviously Neil Adams, great artist, but his uh take on the specter was pretty weak actually i mean because he was like look i'm i'm just going to take them the the criminals to jail i don't believe in execution or <laughs> you know and stuff and like man the freaking specter would not only kill the criminals like many times he would just kill them but he would also like mind torture them <laughs> like he would, he would, you know how he could sh make people, uh, he, he created, um, like hallucinations. He would cr manifest hallucinations that the criminals would see and it would drive them insane. Then he would kill them. You know, that was the whole thing with the Bernard Bailey specters. Like, you know, well, the specter was kind of like, you know, it was the right hand of God that brought him back to life. That yeah. was it. He was literally appointed by God to fight crime on Earth. You know, it's kind of like the early Batman in the 1940s. He was pretty brutal too, and he carried a gun. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. He, he exactly. was throwing guys off of roofs. You know? <laughs> Criminals off of roofs. He, he shot them. And uh, yeah. And I mean, I like that. You know the. You know when the the go go check specters stuff. Like when uh, the classic cover where he's battling Satan or a demon and like, <laughs> you know, he's, he's got the earth is like, he's holding the earth and specter is like punching it or something is the demons. It's a classic cover. I think I still have that issue and that stuff's pretty good, but Neil Adams stuff, he, he just became more of like a, uh, just like a normal crime fighter that would, you know, arrest the guys and then just put them in, you know, take them to jail. And yeah, I was well, like, ah. Eh. Well, Neil yeah. Adams had the artwork going for him, you know. The they are, the was, art's fantastic. Because, is, yeah, no his no art really brought... The art. If, do, do you ever notice that? that uh, hmm. Neil Adams had the capability of really bringing out the emotions and the faces. Yeah. So oh, that, absolutely. That was, uh, I, to me, that was his, my, you know... What I liked about Neil Adams the most is the, how how he can get the emotions in the faces like nobody else could. He, you're absolutely right. Yeah, he had the, the, there was a like a new he added a new dimension to comic yeah. books. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and my only complaint is that he should have he uh, the Spectre should should have been more violent. Like I mean because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Otherwise, because I when I read the old Bernard Bailey shit, I just I'm laughing because it's so hysterically violent. I mean, and it's so crude because Bernard, you know, when you see the Bernard Bailey stuff, like granted, some of those more fun covers are insanely good. 
when you look at them just as art goes, like, you know, comic book cover art with yeah. the specter on the cover. Whoo, man, that stuff is top flight. But but the stories inside that Bernard Bailey would do at that time, he must have been like 20 years old, you know, somewhere in there. He was really young. Yeah, and, and he was uh, kicking it. He was kicking it, too. He was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. God, it was, uh, wasn't it Jerry Siegel and Bernard Bailey? They co create they, they created the Spectre. That was, I was lo- trying to figure out who the other guy was, but I'm Those sure it was two. Jerry Siegel. <clears throat> yeah. Monumental time right there, you know, uh, late 30s, early 40s, man, for comic books. It was just, it was huge. Siegel was involved in that? Yeah, Jerry Siegel. Wow. Yeah, in D.C., you know, uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, Michael Taylor says, Captain, I was thinking that before you showed it, why don't you blow up that panel? <laughs> yeah, he was he was thinking it. Yes, you should put it on your wall of strange. It is so great. That is so great, man. Uh, Chalwa says, Jim Aparo series of Spectre. Yeah, that's the Fleischer, the Fleischer Aparo. Uh, combo yeah michael fleischer and uh, jim apero yeah yeah just a great combo uh man talk about fantastic reminds me a little bit of scarecrow john ostrander i like the ostrander stuff it got kind of very weird spacey and metaphysical but that was the latter ostrander and uh who was the guy it was ostrander and the, the other cat they had a weird name they did those later specters. I really like that stuff too. I've got several issues of that. I don't, you know, oddly enough, I don't have much of the specter. I have to get more involved with uh, picking up uh, the Silver Age and uh, into the Bronze Age specters. Yeah, the and the one thing, man, I'll tell you, for some reason, it really gets me with some of these publishers like DC because when that specter. Uh, volume came out with all of the more fun specters you know yeah. they, they it was like the dc archives volume one of the specter that thing sold out like in a day it was just gone right they never reprinted it and so consequently now you're gonna pay a hundred 150 bucks for that freaking you know yeah that's where these archives. yeah that's where these sellers you know they gouge you they know <laughs> that uh you can't get it so they gouge you it's they do know. They really do gouge you. It's ridiculous. And DC would, I just don't understand it because DC would make more money if they simply just put out a second printing. I, yeah, I don't get it. I, I never got, I never understood it either, to, to be honest with you. I, I mean, it's a way to make money and then they're, they're not doing it. Instead, they're do, doing everything else that just kills them. Yeah, exactly. I got weird with the 40 Spectre toward the end. Percival popped the super. Oh, it got weird. I don't remember Percival Pop. The Super Cop. Yeah, I don't remember that. Uh, Mandrake was Ostrander. Yeah, Ostrander and, and Mandrake. Those, that was the combo, the writing and art combo of the later Spectres. Uh, Chawa, I love the Spectre archives. Got an awesome deal. They should reprint those. Yeah, they should. You know, it's comic history, folks. It's not something it's like, ooh, it's collectible. No. It's a volume of collected works of more fun comics that everybody should be able to get, in my opinion. You know, it should people should not be price gouging on it. Yeah. Especially the reprint stuff, you know. That's... Yeah, the reprints. What the hell? I see these freaking and it's like those stupid those facsimiles they keep putting out. Now I see like the what is it, Tales of Suspense number 30. Nine, nine is the first, yeah, first Iron Man. Iron Man, you know, the facsimile they're trying to sell them for like 50 60 bucks now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a facsimile that that's not from the publisher, though. No, it's just people on eBay. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I, <laughs> I'm like, look, yeah, I'd rather spend a facsimile, I'd rather take that 50 60 dollars and put it towards buying something like this. Yeah, look at that. Wow, look at the condition of that. And that cut co- that I think I consider that cover of Baffling Mysteries to be the greatest cover they put out. I oh. mean, if you look at the detail on that cover, it is so weird. 
and the art is so good on that. I don't know who did the art here. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I can't recall is the there... artist. Got yeah. initials in there? I don't. <clears throat> you know, I just noticed that, but I don't know if it is. Let me. Look, that is just a beauty. Look at that. Now I can't really. Let it focus. What what number is that, Captain? This is number uh shit, I don't even know. It's from nineteen fifty-four. Uh number thirteen. No, okay, number twenty-three. Number twenty-three. Twenty-three, okay. Hold on. Affle yeah, Ace magazines. One. And that is Jim McLaughlin. Jim nope, McLaughlin? Nope. I'm sorry. No, it's not number 13. Sorry. I just screwed up. It's 23. 23. Sorry about that. Oh. It is not even credited. They have a question know. mark. You know, I was looking at this. There is a, there is an initial there, but it's it's the ID for independent. It's the, uh, it's the icon for independent distributor. Oh, okay. Gotcha. God. Man, talk about a lineup of artists inside. They have got uh, freaking Charles Nicholas, really great golden age artist. Uh, Jim McLaughlin, once again, Clang of the Crypt Door. And they have Maurice Gutworth, Frenzy of Sheila Lord, The Last Story by Maurice yeah. Gutworth. Uh, well, let me... Absolutely fantastic. What a cover. That cover, and look at the condition of that comic book. I'm yes. stunned. I'm shocked and amazed. Well, some of them are pretty good that I got, and some of them are pretty low grade. You know, I bought these all a long time ago. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's Maurice Gutworth right there, man. He did so many great covers. What an artist. And you got your money's worth, man, for a damn dime? Yes. You got something you can read. Yep. You're absolutely right. Baffling mysteries. Let me show you some more of the interior here. Oh, look at that one. Oh, uh, yeah, the clang of the crypt door. <laughs> it's freaking <laughs> awesome. And is it, man, the pages are like white. That is stunning. Well, white to off white, yeah. Stunning condition. And the cover, too, man. Just seeing a cover like that in perfect shape, that's beautiful, you know? Because that's one of the great, to me, that's one of the great covers of Baffling Mysteries, that whole Do you know series. who did this? Who did this story here? It happened, it happened on, on Valentine's Eve. Yeah, who yeah was that the, was Charles Nicholas. The artist? Yep, who did the pencils? Wow, because yep. he, he's he's drawing some pretty beautiful women here. He does, yeah. Charles Nicholas has done some awesome stuff, man. He did stuff. Oh boy, I, he he goes way back. He goes back early forties, I believe, at least like 44, 45, You know, yeah. So he he had been on the scene for a while. Well, that was great stuff back then. I mean, I don't, you know, today, I, of course, the books are so expensive today. They're not producing books that, you know, for the sheer enjoyment and entertainment, you know, it's for politics and the politics of the writers and stuff like that. You know, back then with these books, it was pure entertainment and excitement, you know. I can't oh, yeah, get excited absolutely. over modern comics anymore. I just cannot get excited over them whatsoever. Yeah. No, they're, it's just, it's very rare. Something comes out <laughs> that I really dig. You know, I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. You know, and it's typically, it is not Marvel or DC. I just, you know, it's an indie. It's some indie publisher. Uh, if it's If it's interesting to me. Anyway. I heard IDW is uh, in, in big trouble. They're losing yeah, they're a lot going. Of, yeah, they're losing I, a lot of money. Yeah, it's too bad, too, because, you know, they did some great, those artist editions they did. 
Yes. Are, or, or were really a, a big contribution to comic art. Right. And, and I had some of those too. Yeah. They're fantastic. And Absolutely. those are, you know, they're expensive, but uh, man, the quality is insane. They're really quite good. Um, Chalwa says Jack Cole was great on plastic man. He worked for playboy, of course, died under tr tragic circumstances while well, he killed himself. Yeah. Uh, with a rifle. Yeah. Hugh Hefner was at his funeral. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. That would, that would make total sense. I mean, Cole was, Cole was great, man. That pre-code horror stuff that Cole did was, and the crime, the crime and the horror, both of them were just God fantastic you know you can't go wrong with pre-code horror correct chawa there's no doubt about that he says had to get baffling mysteries hardcover reprints oh yeah yeah the, well that's the the reprints by ps art books are awesome well he's saying you can't afford them like you big boys but i'm, I'm <laughs> telling you i bought these a long time ago if i were to buy these today i couldn't buy them yeah that i mean they've they've gone through the roof I mean, when I was picking these up, some of them, believe it or not, I got, uh, I bought back in the 70s at some of the first conventions and I paid like a dollar. Yes. For these uh, comics. Yes. But, I mean, it's insane, man. Well, you know, uh, when you go back, I don't know if you saw any of the videos I did on the San Diego Comic Con from the early 1970s through the year 2000. I've got video of the conventions on my channel. And uh, they talk about prices and stuff. And, of mm -hmm. course, in the early 70s, it was like, you know, you could get a, I don't know, medium grade copy of uh, Action Comics number one for 300 bucks you know in the 70s but uh, maybe in the real early 70s i know in that the early was, 70s yeah. yeah i know that in 73 or 4 one book was for sale action number 1 and i was trying to buy it in chicago oh, yeah, that's right for a $1000 a guy wanted yeah that's still like incredible and i had I considering i had about half the money for it and i asked my brother you know if he can borrow me the money i was working for my brother in the beer distributing business i was driving a truck you know for him and stuff and he he said i can't borrow you a 500 dollars. what do you want it for and i said well i'm trying to get you know invest in this <laughs> the first appearance of superman in a comic book you know action comics number one he said a comic book you want to pay a thousand dollars for a comic book are you crazy <laughs> And he was, you know, really adamant about it. He didn't want me to spend, you know, even five hundred dollars on it my, of my own money, let alone borrow another five hundred dollars from him or anybody else. And then uh, today, of course, it's you know like millions. And, uh, right. Yeah. Even it. There's a part in the video when it goes up to the year two thousand. Metropolis Comics, which was Metropolis Comics at the time, now I believe it's Metropolis Collectibles in New York. They were at the show. The year 2000 the san diego comic-con they had a copy of uh action comics number one mid-grade i think it was a 6.0 in the year 2000 they were selling it for 40 grand forty thousand dollars now imagine that oh. a 6.0 in in the year 2000 then a 6.0 in the year 2020 your forty thousand dollars would just well, basically, it'd probably go up by like fifteen to twenty times. Yeah, that, that, that would, amount that would probably sell for several hundred thousand dollars. You know? Oh, easily, easily. I would, I would put it like around eight hundred thousand in yeah. the year twenty twenty. So you're just even though forty grand is a huge investment, there's no doubt about it. It's like in the year two thousand, that's still a big investment. You know? Yeah, yeah it sure. Is. In twenty years, you're just like. You know, uh, it paid off. Let's put it that way. Paid off in a big way. Can't do that no more. Oh, no. Yeah, that's that's long gone. Um, let's see. Oh, Chawa says, what? There's a John Romita Spider-Man comic script artist edition coming soon. Uh, being done by IDW, I would assume. If it, if I, I think they're the only ones that do the artist edition. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give you two dollars, double your money. 
<laughs> Eric says, it was great watching this evening. Alas, I have to get things ready for tomorrow. All right, man. Eric, right. yeah, guys, check out his his uh, channel right there. He is on tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time. Live no, he's show. on 11 a.m. Central Standard. Yeah, Eastern, 12 noon Eastern. 12 noon I, Eastern. I, I always think in Eastern because I'm Eastern okay. time. Are you gonna be? In? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <coughs> oh, I'm there. Out. I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna there check it out. Yeah, I'm absolutely. gonna watch uh, Doc Silver, Agent Shannon at nine o'clock, and then eleven o'clock I'll go over to uh, Eric Boyd. Groovy, groovy. There it is, folks. Check him out. He's got the link in the in the channel in the chat. Uh, see you, Eric. Have a good one. Glad to see you on the show. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna write it down right now. Whoops, that was noise. That's what I did. Uh, I did the same thing, Captain. I actually literally had I when when something like this happens, I have to actually write it down. Yeah, I'm still a, old school yeah. that way. Yeah, that's me too. Yeah, Eric. Eric Boyd. Oh Boyd. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Look at those boobies. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, are you, we, uh, how, how are you? What do you, what do you got there, Captain? You got well, some more? I don't know. It's up to you. It's already been what? You've been up for two and a half, two and a uh, half hours. It, it, that's, that is true. I've got, well, there's a couple. What do you got? What do you have there uh, in the well, lineup? I got, more, I got horror, some more horror comics. Oh, let's take a look at them. Let's take a look. Well, here's uh, Mr. Mystery number 15. Oh geez, Louise, check that out. Let me get I, nice. I, I got to get it out of the uh... now. A lot of that, you know, who did a lot of Mister Mystery was that team. The uh, what? Who the who the hell are those guys? The two dudes. They did a ton of work. I mean, throughout the years, uh, you know who I'm talking about. They always did uh, art together. Um. Let's see, Mr. Mystery. Um, yeah, I know what you I know what you mean. Um Stanley Morris, of course, one of the greats. <laughs> can't think of the damn names now. Oh, Ross Andrew and Mike Esposito. Oh. The great Andrew and Esposito combo, man. Uh Ross Andrew would do the pencils and Mike Esposito would do the inks on a ton of that stuff. And Probably the- on that issue. On that cover, I'd imagine. I think this cover is uh, Bailey again. Oh, who's what? What issue is that? This is uh, number eighteen, and I think it's uh, Bernard Bailey. You are correct, sir. That is Bernard Bailey. Man, Bernard Bailey got around. I'm telling you, he sure it did. Is. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, and you're right. He uh, absolutely did. All over the freaking play. Great cover too. So weird. You know, and the one thing I loved about Mr. Mystery, too, was the uh, host, the guy with the top hat, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mystery. He yeah. was always like so pleasant <laughs> introducing these horror. Yeah, the real tales. pleasant character introducing these murderously horrible. Oh, horror yeah. Stories. There we go. Tony Mortiaro right there. That is the great Tony Mortiaro doing that that particular story. There's a I love that poison. splash. Yeah, the poisons. That weird looking monk scientist there. Mm. That is such a great. Yeah, I love Mortiaro stuff. Some of the covers he did too, man. I, just, you know, I think uh, if, I, if I'm remembering this right, I think there's a Basil Wolverton story in here. No, yeah, probably. Yeah, because he did. They did do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. It's. <laughs> Robot woman. Oh, that one is so good. It's so twisted. Just like you the know? characters here. Yeah, I mean, Wolverton just had such a unique style. Uh, Nobody looked at even remotely like him, like his stuff. You could always tell Wolverton a mile away. 
Yeah, kind of like Jack Kirby and Steve Dicko. And oh, yeah, and Jack Cole. He was another one who just had this weird-ass style. So great. Whoa. God, man. Wolverton. Yeah. Yep, Chaw, yep. Yeah, Craig Yo reprints. I got a ton of those. At least a dozen of those, anyways. Which are quite good and really good reproductions, too. Love the Don Heck close up covers. Oh, yeah. The bullet to the forehead cover, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mystery covers, fantastic. I love that host and the one on, you know, the host of the Beware Terror Tales was uh, the mummy. That guy that always introduced the stories. Yeah, they always had different, uh, trying yeah. to get these different hosts, you know. Like, well, the kind of, you know, following the, the tales from the crypt stuff. Uh, and some of those hosts were really great, you know. I really, I really like those kind of, and Dr. Death, of course. Back to uh, death, from, yeah. This magazine is haunted. You know, I got I got a note on this. I just just came dropped out of the freaking thing. It says first first come, first serve. What is oh pencils and things to Tony uh, speaking of Tony Mortadelaro, right? Yeah, Tony Mortalero. Yep. Mortalero. Or Mortalero. Tony Mortolero. He did the pencils and inks on Amazing Spider-Man 121, The Death of Gwen Stacy. Oh, I didn't know that. That is weird. I didn't either until I just reminded myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I forgot. You know, I, I got a note here. That is strange. They, they just threw them in for one issue. I'm like, there it is. Do this one. <laughs> That is bizarre. Well, yeah, I don't want to tie it up now, you know, because I know you've been on for a couple hours. Yeah, let me, I tell you what, let me do a couple of things here. I'm going to, I do want to drop a couple of things in the chat. Oh, wait a second. That is that. Okay. Yeah, there. here's a couple of things, guys, on YouTube that I want to show you that are Lovecraftian in nature. Oh, yeah, we didn't even get... I, I, I should have came on... I got off my ass. Uh, that's, that, that's totally yeah, fine, man. There we go. I think that's... Did that work? Yes, it did. Okay. Just a couple of things that it definitely are not on Tubi that you may want to check out. This one is called Out of Mind. I'm going to play a little bit of it right now, just so you get an idea. But this character, this actor that plays Lovecraft is quite good. Lord Hall. The word was supposed to represent a fumbling human attempt to catch the phonetics of an absolutely non-human word. The name of the hellish entity was invented by beings whose vocal organs were not like man's. These syllables were determined by a physiological equipment wholly unlike ours, hence could never be uttered perfectly by human throats. The actual sound, as nearly as human organs could imitate it, could be taken something as... Okay, that I just wanted to like, show you that. Doesn't he look like Lovecraft? That's fantastic, yeah. <laughs> really good. Here's the link. I'm dropping it in the chat now. It's a short movie. It's only like 55 minutes called Out of Mind. But it's really good. If you want to know some stuff about Lovecraft, they mix it. It's kind of like they mix fact with fiction. And uh, so this guy inherits the Necronomicon from an old dead uncle and things start happening. But Lovecraft is there and he's kind of like talking about his life and he gets involved in the story and so forth. And it's really quite good. So I highly recommend that one. 
Also, this is brand new, folks. I'm going to drop the link in the chat. This is the Shadow over Innsmouth. It Ooh. is the animated comic. That's you know that's one of my favorite stories, but if not the favorite story from uh, Lovecraft. They have just started this, and, and the have, Alchemist too, which was his first story. I think. Yeah, that's right, right. The Alchemist, and uh, so they've just started this series. This is number one. Easy Comic Reader is here. Hello, Easy Comic Reader, and Killer Baby. Killer is Baby, also, yeah. Good to see you. Now check this out, guys. I'm going to put this up. This is a short teaser to another motion comic, an animated comic, the same uh, company made for At the Mountains of Madness. There you go. Wow, so, that's absolutely fantastic. And then the black and white makes it so much more eerie. -er. It is It is just great. Now, that's At the Mountains of Madness. The entire 10 chapters is up on their site. I am going to that's another thing drop. Write down. I'm going to drop the site here. Let's see. Where is that? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's MSA. This is... Uh, the channel itself and you will find all 10 chapters of at the mountains of madness msa matthew is the channel MSA and, uh, matthew yeah that's what it is it's literally msa matthew is the youtube channel they have the complete at the mountains of madness and they've just started with chapter one of the shadow over insmith it just came on 10 days ago Wow. And right. boy, is it good, man. Um, I dig these. I dig the way that they do these uh, motion comics. Um, so in any case, there you go. And what's really weird about it is that, okay, I don't know where these guys are from. They could be from Russia because every one of these episodes that they do are in English and then they do one in Russian. As you will see, when you go to the channel, you'll see it. That doesn't bother me at all. I don't no, it doesn't bother me at all. It's just kind of like, I believe that at least some of the people involved are Russian. It may be an American-Russian uh, collaboration. I like the Russians, man. I do, too. You know, and they look, they make incredible films. I mean, they're like, they've been doing movies, obviously, since the silent era. And uh, they have made some killer science fiction and horror films. There's no doubt about that. I mean, really good stuff. So uh, in any case, guys, highly recommended. Check out At the Mountains of Madness uh, and the brand new series they got, The Shadow Over Innsmouth. Part one is a great opener. They really do it well. It's got all the dialogue you know, a uh, really great character dialogue. And of course the animation is, you know, it's that really basic motion comic animation, but it's really well done. Oh yeah. Know? It looks gorgeous, man. I mean, highly recommended, you know, really, really good stuff. I would uh, be excited just to see that in the comic magazine, but to add a little motion to it, it makes it even more exciting and interesting. Yes. And the other one I wanted to show you guys was this one. I'm dropping the link. It's on eBay. I mean, on eBay. <laughs> Good Lord. It's on YouTube. Okay, this is the the best Lovecraft documentary I've ever seen. It's called Lovecraft Fear of the Unknown. 
and uh, it is great. If you want to see a killer documentary on H.P. Lovecraft with all of the guys, man, he's got uh, S.T. Joshi, who is like one of the authorities on H.P. Lovecraft in his life. He is interviewed, uh, of course, Guillermo del Toro, who's one of the biggest Lovecraft fans in the world, who actually tried to, he was, for years, he was trying to make At the Mountains of Madness, you know, into a film. And he just ne never could get the budget because he was looking at like, I think he wanted like $150 million. Oh. And they were like, eh, we're not going to give you that for a Lovecraft movie. I'm sorry. Hmm. Uh, so it even Guillermo del Toro could not uh, raise he, the uh, money. Didn't Lovecraft, I think, uh, kind of invented uh cosmic horror so he did oh he's the dude yeah he is where yeah. cosmic horror sprang from there there's no doubt about that and there's a lot of great writers a lot of people you know that's what i said at the very beginning you know i i personally celebrate the 100th anniversary of weird tales magazine which began in 1923 Simply because of the fact that without Weird Tales magazine, horror would be a much worse genre today. Because so many writers sprang from Weird Tales. They became known. They got their faces out there, their works out there. They, they got on the map because of Weird Tales, including Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, Hugh B. Cave, Robert Block, Ray Bradbury, you yeah. can go down the list. They mm -hmm. all cut their teeth on uh, Weird Tales magazine, pulp magazine. And uh, a huge, it's one, uh, culturally speaking, uh, a huge debt of gratitude uh, is owed to Weird Tales. I, I love it. I've got like, you know, reprints of the, of the pulp magazine, which you can get folks for around 10 to 12 <laughs> bucks, which is not bad. Um, on eBay or on Lulu.com. I wonder if, would you know if they have the entire uh, volume of Weird Tales uh, in uh, hardback reprints? Well, I've got a few hardcover Weird Tales. Let, let me show you. Show you what I'm talking about here. I'm just wondering if they got all 100. Uh, or, or well, I, uh, you know, how many, I don't know how many issues there were, but. Oh, God, there were, well, let's put it this way. They lasted from 1923 to 1954. So you're looking at, God, what would that be? Uh, 150, 200 issues? Yeah. That would be, I mean, they're, they don't have all of that in hardcover. They have like selected works in mm -hmm. hardcover. And what's really cool is like, for instance, let me get this one so you guys can see this. Yeah, this is great, man. <laughs> Let me see here. There we go. All right, now check this out. Now, these are originals. This is from 1934, Weird Tales with the Margaret Brundage cover. Look at that and uh, this is one of my favorites because all the stories in this are fantastic. The Black Gargoyle by Hugh B. Cave is incredible. Clark Ashton Smith is in this. And Hazel Held at the bottom. Yeah. A.K.A. H.P. Lovecraft. So Hazel Held was a real writer. She wrote a ton of stuff but what she would do is send her ideas to lovecraft and he would totally revise her stories and that way they would get published in weird tales hmm. and uh this is just an incredible issue she's got a nice pair of traffic stoppers oh. too i'm sorry what, what was that captain 
Oh, I said she's got a nice pair of traffic stoppers. She's got, <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at the, the creature looking at her, leering at those traffic stoppers. Oh, yes. Classic Margaret Brundage cover, <laughs> you know. Uh, and this is a little later. This is actually Hans Bach, who is a, just a fantastic pulp artist. Wow, another from back in the movie. day. Yeah, this I think this is 1942. And this has uh, Herbert West Reanimator, of course, which eventually was adapted by Stuart Gordon into the film Reanimator. I saw some Casper branded Halloween makeup kits at Walgreens today. That oh, is weird. cool. Huh. Casper branded. From, yeah, Casper the Friendly Ghost. What, was it all just yeah. white makeup? <laughs> oh. Just spraying right. yourself white? <laughs> I'm Casper the Friendly Ghost. Uh, easy comic reader. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night. easy comic reader. Good night, Good night, everyone. Have a great uh, weekend. Good night, Captain. Thank you again. And uh, we'll talk to you all very soon. Take care. Good night, you guys. <laughs>